I was told this story about 16 years ago by my mother, so I may make some mistakes, but what I remember is true and it's still extremely freaky. This happened in St. Kilda in the early 80s. My mum may have been 20 or 21, and she lived in an apartment complex where you had to ring a buzzer and talk to someone to be let into the complex. In case you didn't know, at Kilda, it isn't exactly the best area in Melbourne to live. There's a lot of junkies and criminals reside around the suburbs, and they congregate at St. Kilda Pier. In the 90s, I remember warnings of not walking through the sand in the beaches due to syringes being left in there. We had a real heroin epidemic at the time, and AIDS was a death sentence too. But anyway, at around 2am, mum is in bed asleep. Then all of a sudden, she hears this blood-curdling scream from a woman in the streets below. She wakes up, dials triple zero to tell the police what she heard, and for them to come as soon as possible. Five minutes go by and two men are ringing the buzzer saying, Police here, let us in so we can get a statement. My mum was about to buzz them in until she all of a sudden had a really bad gut feeling and decided to ask questions such as, How did the police get here so quickly? Why aren't there any flashing lights? Where was the ambulance? So she called her friend, who lived on the floor below, telling her that something just didn't seem right. At the same time, they were constantly buzzing and refused to give their badge numbers. So she rang the St. Kilda Police Department and said, Your officers are here already? The sheriff said that the police were tending to other matters though and that they'll maybe be half an hour away. He also told her not to let those people in as they were not his men. So mum went down to her friend's place as she didn't feel safe in her own place anymore. 40 minutes later, two police officers rang the buzzer, introducing themselves as constable and senior constable, with badge numbers being and apologizing for being late, and asking if they could come in. My mum's friend now and my mum too could see a police car with sirens and an ambulance as well. So they let the police in and the police take a statement. They let them know that detectives are investigating the vicinity and will let them know if the police require them to come into the station for further questioning. The police then leave and crime scene tape is wrapped around the area, which mum discovers the next morning. Being absolutely terrified, mum decides to stay at her friend's place and barely sleeps that night. And the detectives, they discover a body about 20 meters away from the apartment complex. The victim was a young woman in her early 20s, just coming back home. She was stabbed several times. I don't know whether they even found the criminals, but what I have learned is never to go home alone at night, to always trust your gut. Also, don't believe people at their word without evidence. It terrifies me to think about what could have happened to my mum that night had she buzzed those two men in. So, I have a bunch of paranormal stories, but this one was my first. In 2003, I was a part of the invasion of Iraq. The platoon that I was a part of was tasked with guarding a salt factory. We were there to stop looting, and additionally, behind the factory were two mass graves and about 20 destroyed Republican guard vehicles. Well... We set up a day and night shift with four guard positions that we would rotate through every two hours. The first position was at the entrance gate in a shed, two positions on the side of the building and vehicles, and the last one on the roof looking over the graves and the vehicles. I was up on the roof after midnight pulling my shift. I was up there with a machine gun, my rifle, body armor and helmet with night vision goggles, NVGs. The roof is flat with one door in the corner with a huge water tank for the building. There's really only one way up and down from the roof and that was through the one door. I'm sitting up there in my chair when all of a sudden someone slaps me on the back of my head. I mean I felt and heard a skin on skin slap so I stand up and say all right I wasn't sleeping but when I did there was nobody there. 
But that's when I realized that it was skin on skin and I was still wearing a helmet. Which means that there's no way that someone could have touched me there. I looked around with my night vision goggles and I don't see anything. There was no place for someone to hide or run fast enough to get to the door. I pulled my night vision goggles off and that was when I saw it. There was a blue orb, maybe about the size of a volleyball, hovering 10 feet from me. Then it shot towards the doorway. I slowly go back to my seat and stare off into the night, wondering what the heck that was. Eventually though, my time is up and I swap spots with my buddy Matt. And not even 15 minutes in, Maddie comes running down the stairs screaming about there being something on the roof. He says that he was looking out with his NVGs when something grabbed his wrist and jerked him out of his hand forcefully. He said all that he saw was a floating blue orb and then he ran for the door. I told him what happened to me and he started screaming that the place is haunted and that he would never go up there again. Maddie, he's a man of his word too and he never did go back up there. He even slept in her vehicles outside in the heat of Baghdad. But we ended up leaving that place a week later, never to return, but it's something that just has always stuck with me. So I'll try to keep this brief, although it's a lot of information. But these are my experiences from a case that I've been working in my role as a chaplain and demonologist for the Order of St. John. You may remember some of my stories from before, but... If you're a skeptic, this definitely won't convince you, nor is it an attempt to do so. Also, I'm not embellishing details very well, so feel free to ask me some questions in the comments below if you would like. So before my visit, I was given a referral by our regional chaplain. They're responsible for ministry and chaplaincy support with a large area of the city. Chaplains are a community-placed role whereas pastors and ministers work in churches and typically priest work in an abbey or monastery, in our denomination at least. I used to be a pastor myself, but now I'm a, a chaplain in the community. I'm an area chaplain, which means that I'm responsible for a handful of suburbs and any of the Order of St. John staff who work or live in these suburbs. The referral that I was given was from within my area too. I needed to go and check out a forest that someone had reported creepy things going on in, which included strange noises, feelings of being watched, and also strange signs. The community member also reported that they always had nightmares and a bad sleep after visiting the forest, but didn't put this together for a little while. It's a nice forest too, small and on the edge of suburbia. It's secluded, so it's great for walking dogs and whatnot. So naturally, I took my dog, and I always take a, a blessed Tayaha with me. On my first visit, I found some strange things, though, and heard some strange things, too. I found a bird with a broken neck next to a bag of rotting meat, opposite a small candle shrine in the forest. To me, this was a clear indicator of something human going on, although my job is to try and disprove the paranormal, but... I have to admit that this immediately put me in the concerned camp. I continued to walk and found two more dead animals. One was a native eel that had its head cleanly cut off, and the other was a dead hedgehog that had sadly been bludgeoned to the point that it was flat. My first assumptions were psychotic teens, homeless person, or attempted dark magic. There are also some strange markings painted on the trees on the path as well, which was noteworthy, but I also noted that there was no wildlife noises present. But we are in a change of seasons here, so pressure drops are common at that moment. However, I performed a blessing, which includes singing, and the birds were singing by the time that I finished. I took the rotting meat and I threw it in the bin. On my second visit, for this visit... I came back armed with a Bible, a small wooden cross, and my uniform. Blessings are often not a one-and-done resolution. You need to bless something multiple times, and blessings are one of our most misunderstood tools. They're a, a security blanket, not a, a conflict resolution sort of thing. But this visit is when things sunk in for me. 
I found large drag marks around the forest, many of which ended at a small shrine area where I had found the dead bird. This visit is also when I started to hear murmuring in the forest that was just barely audible. I also started to experience large movement around me, with one inexplicable movement in a, a shallow stream. The stream is about 15 centimeters deep, but something splashed in it, sent the water about a meter into the air. It was just really strange. I also felt this niggling pressure on the back of my neck and back ribs, but this could have also been anxiety-driven muscle tension, I admit. I walked through the forest with my cross drawn and prayed a small exorcism invocation whenever it felt appropriate, just to be safe. Now my third visit, this was the hardest one. When I arrived, the whole forest smelt horribly of death because of all the dead animals. I assume that there are some that I missed, but I certainly found more. A decapitated rat, birds, mice. This time, I had brought my prayer book of St. Martin to consecrate the area. When I entered the forest, it sounded as though people were using the track, so I kept the dog on the lead. But I never found anyone. The talking always seemed to be around a corner almost, and just indistinguishable. When I began the prayer, I immediately started to vomit uncontrollably, and this sickly sweet smell of death became unbearable. But I pushed through. I also constantly heard the movement of something large in the forest at this point. I kept praying and vomiting until I finished the consecration and then the vomiting stopped. The smell of death also disappeared and I did the prayer again to be safe and didn't vomit this time. On my fourth visit, I returned and the animals were either gone or had decomposed. The smell had also gone completely. There were still some strange noises and movements within the forest and the water. We don't have large wildlife here, so the noises are strange to say the least. But other than that, things seemed to be coming right. I still felt stalked and still heard murmuring, but the activity absolutely seems to have lessened. I do need to go back and pick up all the rubbish that has accumulated, bless it again and fix the markings, so wish me luck and I'll report back after I've done this. I live on a 13 acre property in an area of my state where the suburbs turn to rural farmland. My parents live in the main house near our road while my fiancé and I converted one of the barns of the back half of the property into our house. Our house and another barn are set in a pretty wide clearing pasture, but beyond that, we're surrounded by woods on three sides. All of this is to say that we don't get many visitors out here. From the time that we moved into the house almost a year ago, there have been some occasions where I get this inexplicable feeling of terror while outside at night, I've lived in the woods my whole life, including in places far, far more remote than this, but I've never had this feeling before. The woods, they're really home for me. In every other place that I've lived, they've felt like my woods, but not, not here. I've repeatedly had the feeling that I'm trespassing on somebody else's land, someone who isn't happy to have me here. Anyway, the other night I took my dog out for his last walk. It was 11pm, so it was pitch black outside the ring of light cast by the floodlights on the side of the house. As I was walking towards the edge of the tree line where my pup likes to do his business, I heard a sound like someone imitating the hoot of an owl coming from the direction of the other barn, maybe about 30 yards away to our right. I was so certain though that it was a human making the noise that I called out, Ha ha, very funny, Dad. I assumed that it was my father closing up the barn for the night, and that he was taking the opportunity to try and spook me. But nobody called back. It was at this point that my dog lifted his head from sniffing all over and froze, staring in the direction of the barn. His hair stood up along his spine, and he started to give a low, menacing growl. 
Now, this dog is obsessed with all people and animals for that matter. Everyone is a friend waiting to be made. I've really never seen him act aggressively toward anything, even other dogs that have tried to fight him. My dad especially is his favorite person on the planet, so there's no way that he could have started growling at him. It was my turn for all the hair on my neck to stand up as a cold wave of fear hit me like a brick. My dog had stopped right at the edge where the light met the darkness of the woods. Normally, the light gradually dissipated into the trees, still providing enough visibility to see the outline of trees and shrubs and whatnot. But this time, it just ended with a solid wall of black. I've never seen anything like this. It was not natural, that much is for certain. When suddenly, I heard the same fake owl sound from maybe only a, a few feet away, just on the other side of that darkness. My dog jumped and immediately started barking, putting himself between me and this sound. He's only a little guy though, so I darted forward, scooping him up, and took off running toward the house. And behind me, I heard the sound again, but this time it had a sort of strange warble to it. Almost like, I don't know, almost like laughter. Anyway, I got inside, I locked the door, and I didn't go back out again that night. The next morning though, when I went out to check on the barn, I found the doors had been partially broken off the slide and were swung past each other the wrong direction like someone had tried to force them open the wrong way or something. There were no signs of footprints in the dust or dirt or anything, or any other signs of any intruder. We didn't have any crazy wind or anything that night, so I have no idea how this happened. I also have no idea what was out there that night, but suffice it to say, my dog and I will stay well within the floodlights when we go out after dark now. So the backstory to this is that my mum had died in 2019 of a, a sudden illness. I'm living in the house that we used to live in together and I'm in a fresh relationship so everything is kind of new. Point is, one morning I noticed the first three letters of my name spelled out on top of a dusty shelf as if someone had drawn it with their fingertips. It's not a smudge at all, since the dust is really thick and the letters are very clear as well. At first, I really didn't think much of it, since I thought that it was just my girlfriend being quirky. But today, we were cleaning up, and I noticed my name written in dust on a lower shelf too. I checked the upper shelf, and now it was not only three letters, but my full first name. The first letters appeared right next to where I keep my tarot cards and the second one appeared where I usually light incense. We asked mutual friends as well as anyone who has been upstairs in the past month and nobody owned up to it. And now that I think about it too, it is very oddly specific to just write someone's name in dust twice like that. I've tried coming up with logical explanations but frankly at this point... I'm just at a bit of a loss. We do not want any spirits of any sort in the house, so I'm hoping that there's something obvious that I just haven't noticed yet. I'm not a, a spirits kind of guy, and to be honest, I would feel weird to live with the feeling that the ghost of my mother could be lurking over me while I'm watching Top Gear or something. But again, I just really don't have an explanation for how my name could have ended up in the places where it has. So this happened to me when I lived with a flatmate and worked nights, and it is still the strangest thing that I've ever seen. So this one night, I came back home at around 2.30 in the morning, and since my flatmate worked as ground staff and her shifts rotated every week, she was supposed to be home at around 6.30 in the morning. I had a private balcony, and because it was winter, I kept it closed or my room would be freezing. I lived in a place that can get 2 or 1 degrees during winter, but that's it. 
so there was never really any heating system in the house, but we had room heaters, so we just kept the door shut. And when I got home, it was odd that it was open since I remembered closing it before leaving for work, but chalked it up to my flatmate. I closed the open door to this balcony, turned off the light outside, and got into my usual routine of taking a bath and changing for bed. It was around 3 in the morning by then, and when I hit the pillow, I fell asleep pretty quickly. Now, this was out of the ordinary for me, since it always takes me a good hour to fall asleep once in bed. I didn't remember falling asleep either, but I woke up maybe an hour later as I was really cold and saw that the door to the balcony was open again and the lights were back on. I remembered closing it and turning the lights off very clearly though. From my bed, I sort of had a bit of a diagonal view to the balcony so I can see anyone who may be standing there. And just as I was about to get out of bed, I saw something move out of the shadows where I couldn't see and into the light. And it was me. And I climbed onto the steel railings. Once on top, I or she turned her neck to look back directly at me and smiled a little too wide for a human. She also had too many teeth, but then she just jumped off the balcony down into the fog. I was frozen. Not that I couldn't move, but more like I was just completely shocked. I got up from bed shakily after a couple of minutes, freaked out of my mind, closed the door, then turned off the lights outside again. I sat there dumbfounded and I didn't sleep for the rest of that night. I still don't understand what I saw to this day, but... It always inspires a, a chill down my back when I think back on it. I haven't seen me or her again since then and I hope that I'm not going crazy. So this happened in Norway and it took place around 2003. I appreciate any comment that can shed some light over what happened as well. Some information first. I'm from Oslo City, but when I was a teenager, we moved to a bit more remote place about 30 minutes outside the city. It was mostly houses and woods, moose, badgers, foxes, wolves and lynx around, but also lots of roe deers, who were really used to humans. There's no farms and stables in the nearby area, no homeless people, and... The teens who snuck out usually hung around the mall to steal fresh delivered Napoleon cake from the bakery's loading dock. But we lived quite central to a mall and a school and such. There was also a small forest behind our house, maybe a five kilometer radius. And one summer, two friends and I went camping for one night in small said forest. We were 14 and 15 year old girls. There was a bonfire place about maybe 100 meters from my house where we put up a tent. The ground is packed tight and has this sort of hollow sound when you walk on it. The tent was big for us. It was made for three and kind of round. So it would be hard for someone to reach the top without collapsing on the tent wall. And it was an old tent as well. So the fabric was a little bit old at this point. Sort of fraying at the edges. It didn't rain that night and... We didn't bring any food or food equipment, except for some candy that we had inside the tent. We sat there gossiping and eating candy until midnight, and when we tried to go to sleep, we heard hooves walking beside the tent. We laid still listening, pretty sure that there were curious roe deer outside, but it was also this sort of, I don't know, like a, a rattling sound of metal that seemed weird. Not like tin cans, and I know that this is going to sound weird, but just like a night armor would sound from the movies. Suddenly it started to blow up with strong wind, and we started talking to sort of ease the atmosphere a bit. The hooves and the metal sound reminded me of a knight on a horse, and then my friend said, that sounds like two knights. We brushed it off as roe deers, but we never really heard them leave. We kept talking when suddenly the wind or something ripped open a huge gash in the middle of the tent roof right above us. 
And then a, a strong light, which I can only describe as sort of like lightning, came through the opening. We screamed and suddenly the wind stopped and the light disappeared as quickly as it came. We sat there in shock and didn't hear anything around us anymore. In fact, it was dead silent. No sounds of footsteps or hooves, no sound of helicopters or anything like that. In fact, all the wildlife had gone completely silent all of a sudden. We just looked at each other. We panicked, got out of our tent, and we ran to my place for the rest of the night. We went back the next morning, and we took down the tent and looked around, but we found nothing that could help us figure out what the heck happened that night. Now, we don't drink or do drugs or anything. My parents were asleep when we got home, so... It couldn't have been them messing with us. Plus, given how silent it was, I think we would have heard someone if they had run away after doing everything that happened. I've been around this little forest in my teens for a long time, and I've never experienced anything weird like this before or afterward. In the aftermath, we nervously landed on some kind of rare lighting and roe deers with one foot in a metal can, but to be honest... I don't think either of us really believe that. Bear with me because this will be a bit long, but I feel like something is happening and I'm going crazy for thinking it, but I experienced this firsthand and it's happening again. Ten years ago, I was dating this guy who owned about 300 acres of ranch land. Had cattle on it too. One night, we were out there having a little country-style date. You know, blankets and a picnic. It's about midnight-ish. We hear drumming all of a sudden, and... At first, we thought someone was driving by on the highway and had an insane bass system. But then, the screaming started... We were getting spooked, but naturally wanted to find out what it was. We got up, got in the truck, and the second that we started it, the drumming and the screaming ceased. We did a patrol, checking out everything. Nothing was out of place. Cameras were normal. Nothing creepy on them or anything. Just a, a couple of cows and the donkey. The gates to all entrances were locked, and... There was no disturbed earth anywhere from vehicles, so in the end we just left. But a couple of days later, we're out doing a feed and count, and we notice a cow and her new calf are missing. We load up a gator and ride out looking, started in the west pasture and made our way east. Towards the east pasture, there are sinkholes and a couple of cave entrances that the animals generally stay away from, other than the donkey that is. We get towards the northeast area where there's more brush and the first thing that we notice is that it's quiet. Like, have you ever been in a church or a school when nobody's there? That sort of eerie oppressive feeling like there's a bunch of eyes on you but nobody's there? It was very much like that. Then we noticed the smell. It smelled like a, a hospital mixed with a ton of ozone. Extremely clean but... This is out in the country. We got off the gator, grabbed the weapons, and headed into the brush. The ground was damp, only one set of footprints in. We found her tracks, but where's the baby? We go further and stumble upon 68. And we found that she was missing her tongue, her udders, and reproductive organs. They were all gone. All the areas looked almost cauterized. There was no blood, no stench, no insects, no scavengers, nothing. I was very much like, what the heck? Whereas my ex just went, not again. And I was like, excuse you? What do you mean not again? According to him, 10 years prior to this, it had happened before. They found another cow that had calved and it was dead never found her calf. They reported it to the authorities, but nothing ever came of it. We marked the location, then head up to the front to make a call. 
Mind you, we're on the back section of the pasture and we have multiple fenced off sections. Two that are unused and that's due to sinkholes and caves along with a lot of brush. We get to the second fenced off area, about 150 acres from where we found 68. And all of a sudden, I hear the calf. She was in the fenced in area. I crawl under the barbed wire, scoop her up and we brought her home. Other than being hungry and a little dirty, she was perfectly fine. When we got home, I made a joke that watch in another 10 years, it's going to be time for another sacrifice. It's been a decade and we've been broken up for a while, but recently an article popped up and it triggered the memory when I saw the location. Cattle being found dead, same description and the same area. I feel like I need to investigate this further, but to be honest, I'm a little bit hesitant because I'm scared of what I may encounter. This happened in June of 2014. I'm a female, was 20 at the time, and just about to move out of my parents' house two weeks later to my first apartment in the city. It was a Wednesday morning around 10 in the morning. I was on summer vacation and off from work that day, so I was still in bed. My parents had left for work earlier and I was home alone. Back then, my room was in the basement and my window was right next to the stairs leading to the front door. I was woken up by the sound of someone walking up the stairs and thought that it was odd, so I got up, took my phone, and went upstairs to try and get a better look at who this could be. Once upstairs, I saw from the kitchen window, there was a man leaving our front yard and going back to the sidewalk. I was relieved and thought that it was probably just somebody selling stuff. But then the man turned around, went back onto our front yard, and started walking toward the right side of the house where there was a door leading to the kitchen. This is where I was standing. The man knocked and he asked if there was somebody home. Looking back, I, I should have said yes through the window, but I, I was just so scared and confused, I, I didn't say anything. He then walked back to the front yard and back onto the sidewalk and started walking away. Again, I was relieved and I told myself that maybe it was a friend of my dad's that I didn't know and that he was looking for him. But this just didn't seem right. I was trying to find any reason for this man to be here other than wanting to break in. And just when I thought the man had left, I saw him come back and walk to the left side of the house towards the backyard. Now, I was really scared, and I knew that he wanted to get in. I went to the front door, unlock it, and waited for a couple of seconds. And it was then that I started to hear something cutting the screen off my parents' bedroom window. And at that point, I was shaking. I opened the front door quietly, ran out of the house and called 911. Two minutes later, a team of police were there, but... Unfortunately, the guy had run away and they never caught him. Needless to say, I was pretty terrified my first three months alone in my first apartment. In 2021, I took a part-time job at a corporate wedding venue in the Rockies. The venue is a beautiful old house on a farm property picturesque mountain, farm, Victorian sort of stuff. During my first shift, I'm given a tour of the underbelly of the house, where linens and laundry were stored. They had gutted the basement to make a huge laundry facility. It had lots of fabric hanging everywhere, industrial machinery, long corridors, perfect nope material. We'll come back to that area in a minute. But after the tour, we went upstairs to this gorgeous Victorian mansion and started to set up the kitchen for the bridesmaids area. As we make small talk, the banquet lead stops me and says, Hey, uh, before they get here, I just want to warn you about some, uh, some creepy things, if you believe in that stuff. She continues when I tell her, Oh, uh, definitely believe in that stuff. Well, uh, 
There are a set of twins buried on the property and they, they haunt the grounds. I live in the carriage house and I've worked here for a few years and I've seen a, a lot of stuff. She has three giant dogs who are allowed to follow us on the property around until guests arrive and she proceeds to tell me all these stories about her dogs being spooked at weird hours of the night and the occurrences had been especially bad lately. To be honest, I thought that it was just playful hazing but her serious tone was too chilling to be a joke. I asked her if I would ever have to lock up alone. She replied with, Oh, uh, no. That's why they offer to let the banquet leads live on the property who aren't scared of ghosts. People often quit if they have to close alone. So, fast forward to post-wedding cleanup. I'm cleaning the kitchen in the old house and my banquet lead tells me that she's going to lock up dining hall outside and be right back. I was honestly so tired that I wasn't even thinking about those ghost twins roaming around. I had let my guard down, I guess, and the house was quiet and the ambience was just lovely. At around 2.30 in the morning, I even started thinking how magical it must have been to live here, to enjoy the ambience night after night like this. When out of nowhere, the door from the staff kitchen to the main dining area suddenly just slammed closed. I dropped what I was holding and bolted to my lead, closing the dining hall. I could see her through the window the entire time and nobody else was on the property. So it was out of literal nowhere and there was nobody here that could have done it. I would have seen them if they had. I was terrified. She saw the look on my face and said, Already? Like she had seen this a million times. She asked me if I wanted to finish the laundry instead, and I shakily said okay, not only because it was post-COVID and I needed money so bad. I didn't want to go back down there, but we had to finish at least getting the laundry started. Terrified and poor, I rolled to the washing machines with my big roller cart full of dirty tablecloths, and shortly after my banquet manager came down to help me load them. We started to load two separate machines and out of nowhere, we hear what sounds like rustling in the rolling laundry cart behind us, like someone was in it rolling around. The wheels were squeaking in the most unnerving way. My banquet lead turns slowly and quietly towards me and says, you know, let's leave these for tonight. I'll get up early and finish them in the morning. I don't know how to describe the level of fear that... I think we both felt in that moment. She had said that it had been getting worse earlier, and in that moment, this tough-as-nails manager, I think it hit her breaking point of being scared. We had reached the apex of scary experiences this employee had seen, and it was on my first night. After trying to finish as much non-house-related work as we could, we clocked out, and I tried to laugh it all off. Her dogs have been helping us feel safe after the laundry incident, but I don't know how she lived there full time, to be honest. I hated every shift so much that eventually I just quit after a month. No other occurrences happened to me after that night, only because I told them that I couldn't close anymore due to my day job. It was actually because of the ghost twins, but it was really frightening stuff, and I definitely spent some time cleansing myself after that experience. When I was younger, around 2004 I think, we used to sneak down through a quiet area of scrub over the dunes and onto the beach to smoke some weed. I lived in a very small coastal town on the mid-north coast of New South Wales. Typical wildlife was possums, wallabies and Maybe the occasional kangaroo. Definitely no dingoes, crocs, or other apex predators around. But one night, as we quietly made our way down the path, we sort of noticed a shuffling and rustling sound in the undergrowth near the path. We stopped moving, and the sound seemed to stop as well. There was absolutely zero light except from some houses in the distance and the moon that night. After a brief pause, we decided to keep moving, but we heard the rustling sound again and this time noticed some bushes moving too. We stopped and my friend whispered, 
Dude, did anyone else see the trees move? I whispered back. Ah, I only saw the bushes move. We stood there, frozen for a few beats. Then in my head, I was weighing up the option to either continue on the path or perhaps just leg it back home. We took a few steps forward, though, when we heard the sound like leaves crunching underfoot. At this point, I reached out and grabbed my friend's hand, thinking that maybe we were being followed by someone. It was right then, too, that I noticed that I could smell something absolutely awful. What the hell is that smell? My mate whispered. His voice came out so small that it frightened me even more. We stood there for a long time, maybe about a minute or two, until we heard a, a very low groan or growl sound coming from a, a few meters away. Now, brush tail possums are quite common in this area and are known to make a sort of a grunting or coughing sound, but they are, the ones that I've heard anyway, distinctly higher pitched and more chirpy sounding than what we heard. This, whatever it was, was very low and it had a sort of a strange catching tisk sound at the end. Needless to say, we wordlessly booked it straight back up the path that we came from. It sounded to me though like a huge commotion of leaves crunching and branches shaking and crashing behind us as we began to run. But reflecting on it with my adult hindsight, it definitely could have been us making all that noise. I don't know. It was strange to say the least and the more I think about it, the more it just doesn't make sense that it was a possum. We never did go back to that spot again and we would often bring it up from time to time, trying to speculate what could have followed us that night. Our best theories is that it was just a, a really big possum or perhaps a person trying to scare us. The biggest issue though that we would argue over is why would a possum follow us, let alone down on the ground? Although my mate says that he saw the tree branches move as well. And if it was a person, how did they make that sound? And what was that smell all about? And also, why didn't we hear any footfall? Maybe it was just a, a coincidence of events, I don't know, but a person following us, a, a nearby possum growling and maybe a nearby dead animal stink wafting over at just the right moment. Whatever the case, it still makes me shiver to think about it now. This, this story has always scared me. I was about 20 and my brother was about 18. I used to drive a, a 97 Chrysler. I mentioned this because it was a cute convertible. It was black with pink and purple flames and totally looked like a girl's car. My brother used to have long black hair and I have long blonde hair. But we were headed to our friend's place at around 8pm and pulled into the Circle K to get gas. We lived in a big city so there was nothing sketchy about it. I mean, we'd done this a hundred times before. Someone approached us though from behind as I put in gas. The dude saw two long-haired people in a car that looked like it belonged to a girl. He approached me and my brother opened the passenger door. Dude was surprised when a six-foot man got out of the car. He then said, Hey, uh, my girlfriend's in the hospital. It's a mile down the road. I just need a ride. We grew up in the area and I told my brother under my breath, Man, there is no hospital where he's saying. We told him that we couldn't take him and he then pulled a steak knife out of his waistband, kept telling us, I just need a ride. And I remember my brother stepping in front of me and telling the guy to put the knife down. It was probably 30 seconds of conversation, but man, it felt like forever. The guy started talking to himself, waving the knife around, and then just literally walked away. We got back in the car, got to our friend's house. It was two minutes from the gas station, of course, and then called our parents who came to our friend's place and they told us to call the cops. But here's the kicker. We called the cops and explained what happened. And they found the guy in the neighboring parking lot, sleeping, 
and they told us that they couldn't do anything because he was currently not being violent and they didn't have any evidence other than our word. My mother almost lost her mind talking to this cop. It's whatever in the long run, I mean, we were safe and that's really all that matters, but still, the fact that the cops didn't go and take the footage from the cameras of that place, it still blows my mind. This happened a few years ago and it still rattles me when I think about it. For context, I'm a female and at the time was around 25 years old. I worked in an office of around 150 people and one day I received an email from a co-worker but I didn't recognize his name. The email basically said something along the lines of, I'm sorry if I did something to offend you, given the situation if you'd prefer to never see me again, I understand and will avoid you in the kitchen. I was extremely perplexed as I had no idea who this guy was, but I must have done something to offend this person, right? I responded back along the lines of, I'm sorry if I offended you, sometimes I zone out and it can be perceived as if I'm rude, so I apologize. After this response though, he started getting irritated, basically denying my apology and acting all passive aggressive about it. I wish that I would have kept a screenshot of these emails, but basically, he was confusing the heck out of me with this misunderstanding, so I sent him a message suggesting that we resolve this in person. That was a big mistake. He agrees to meet in the kitchen in the office. I go there and I immediately see a tall, 30-ish year old guy who I've seen around but never met before. I explain to him that I apologize, but... I truthfully have no idea who he is, I've never even really met him before and don't want any issues. What happens after though made me very concerned. His face flushed bright red and he looked visibly angry. He was stuttering and denying that I didn't know who he was and then he says, you've been staring at me for months. When you made eye contact with me, you gasped and ran away. And I mean... What the heck, right? I strongly denied this and told him that it was a mistake. He kept insisting that I've been staring at him for months and he could always see me doing it. Eventually, I realized that he couldn't see reason and I just decided to end the conversation. Upon reflection, I realized that it's possible that he thought that I was staring at him because when you walk in the hallway next to the kitchen... There's a room with glass at the end where a bench of desks are. His desk would be right in line of sight if I was walking down the hallway. And he had a funny sticker on his desk I would sometimes look at. But this... This seems like a huge stretch. Anyway, after this incident, a, a co-worker pulls me over and asks me why I was talking to him. I explained the situation and she looked scared and told me that... Last year, he appeared in the office in a bathrobe, raving like a madman, and apparently he wasn't fired, but it was bizarre to say the least. So, was I dealing with someone in the midst of psychosis? Was he dangerous? No clue, but I reported this ASAP to my manager, who took it seriously enough to tell his manager. I don't think that he works there anymore, Thankfully, I left this company two weeks later, but I was extra cautious to not go anywhere near this dude. I was never going to share this, but I happened across a story the other day that really shook me and I guess that I'm just hoping for more information. This happened a few months ago. I live in Wisconsin, just outside of Milwaukee, so still pretty urban, suburban, but we got quite a few Bigfoot believers up north. I'm currently living alone in my old childhood house. There's miles of woods behind it, and I played in them alone all the time from a truly inappropriately young age to right up into my teens. Nothing overly weird. 
but I'm old enough now that I like to pre-game bedtime with an evening nap, mostly to keep from saying that I'm going to bed at 7, but I'll get up a little from 10 midnight or so and finish my day. And one night, I really overshot it. I woke up about quarter to 3 a.m. I'm taking my dog outside and listening to the family of owls that nest by the woods here, but he's just sort of staring at the darkness and growling. Now, we have raccoons, coyotes, all the normal stuff coming out at night. He's only done this a couple of times in his life, but my mind still jumps to the normal. As a woman living alone, though, it's worth paying attention to. But then I hear a, a sound, and to my ear, it sounds like me. More specifically, a tiny me calling my brother's name in this stupid way that I used to do when I was really little. Consciously, I, I just think, wow, I definitely misheard that. What a weird thought to bring up. And I set out trying to figure out what possible thing I could have heard that could in any way be misconstrued as a little girl's voice from the dark at 3am. Leaves? Some weird bird or something? But I'm standing there, and the undercurrent of weird starts playing underneath my grown adult thoughts. What about all those skinwalker stories? But you're supposed to hear your loved one's voice calling your name, right? Not your voice from 30 years ago calling their name. Which led to a chilling thought of just how long something had to be back there watching me to come up with that sound. But overall, my illogical logic was sound. I still haven't moved. My puppy hasn't stopped growling. Then the owls hoot again. The most basic owl sound ever. Followed immediately by this deep sort of masculine, humanish voice mocking them almost. And it was non-human enough that rather than confirming that there was a creepy dude in my forest, it confirmed the opposite. I said no out loud, turned and walked casually back into the house, pulling my dog with me. Once he was safely inside, I grabbed two of the biggest industrial flashlights that I had and went right back out. I'm ashamed to admit that I chickened out about 10 feet out of the door, chose life and I just went back inside, locked all the doors, got my gun, yada yada yada. Now, I've been a night walker my whole life and I can count on one hand the number of times that I've bumped into another person here. But eventually, I just decided that the neighbor's 18 year old must have been out having a 3am joint in the woods or something and just decided to scare me theory held up solid until I heard this story on here the other day that multiple people have stories about something imitating an owl. Someone said that baby owls make that sound because they haven't learned to hoot properly yet. I've listened to that owl family for years though and I have never heard that. I spent a lot of time researching baby owl sounds hoping that that was the answer too and all I could find was videos of them screeching. It was a very creepy sound, but nothing like what I heard. So, I guess my question is, could someone confirm for me either way, please? A 9 out of 10, love living alone, but this is kind of throwing a wrench into my lifestyle here, and I guess I just want to clear this up. After I graduated last May, I decided to take up a job at my local jail. Nothing long term, just figured that I'd work there for a year and save up some cash before college. Flash forward a little bit, and I'm only a few weeks into training. I've always liked the idea that ghosts really existed, but at that point I really couldn't say that I ever actually saw one. However, that all changed while taking post one night. The time was a little after 5am and I was sitting behind my desk, absolutely bored to tears. So being a good little deputy, I was spinning around in my chair, honestly trying not to fall asleep. This was hour 11 of a 12 hour shift, so I'm just killing some time before I have to go home. Now, to give you a little visual of where I am, 
I'm in a, a giant room with a bunch of cells. At one end of the room is the officer's desk with big windows behind it. These windows are super reflective, so officers can look into the pod from the hallway, but inmates can't look out into the hallway from inside the pod. At the other end of this pod are the or at the other end of this pod are all the cells. This particular pod has some cells that were behind a second pane of glass. I hope you're still with me because this is important, I promise. Anyways, I'm spinning around in my chair at my desk and happen to glance up at the reflective windows behind the desk. As I do, some movement catches my eye upstairs. There is someone walking around upstairs, out of their cell but behind the glass. I stare in disbelief for a moment and instantly freak out. I'm thinking somewhere along the lines of, holy heck, who is out of their cell at this hour? I'm about to get fired. I quickly turn around and see that nobody is up there now. I scramble and check the monitor that gives me control of the cell doors and make sure all of them are locked, which they are. I even go up there myself and make sure that everything is as secure as it can be. And somewhere in the middle of me making sure that I'm not about to get fired, it dawned on me that that was a ghost. I mean... There was no mistaking it. I 1000% saw someone up there. Now, I don't mean that I saw a quick little shadow or a suspicious looking speck of dust or something. I was distinctly looking at someone in an orange jumpsuit walking around up there. I mean, I could tell you this guy's haircut, his height, general build, and even what kind of beard he had. To be honest, I was totally banking on this happening at some point. I mean, from my first day, I could tell that this place was really haunted. I mean, I'd heard the stories. So I immediately get my corporal on the horn and tell her excitedly that I just saw a ghost. But things don't end here. After that, I was bragging to anyone and everyone about my little encounter with some mixed reactions. My sergeant says that he doesn't really believe in ghosts, but some deputies told me that they've definitely seen some paranormal stuff on duty too. However, it's what the sergeant on day shift shared that has really stuck with me. He told me that they apparently had an inmate end their own life in that same pod a few years prior. I had already been told that by a few people who had been there a while. I gave a description of the guy that I saw and we decided to look up the inmate just to see if they looked the same. And I'm telling you right now that it was definitely him. It was the guy that I saw walking around upstairs. Right down to his skinny face and his billy goat beard. There was no mistaking it. I've talked to some inmates about it too and I've had more than one tell me that sometimes they can see or hear someone walk by their cells and peeking in at late hours of the night. It can't be a correctional officer that they're talking about because they're always wearing an orange jumpsuit. Well, that's my one and only spooky experience. I didn't have any notable encounters after that as well. I hope you found this interesting and it's definitely something that is going to stick with me. My mum was born and raised in the high country of East Central Montana. She came from a ranching people and her father and my grandfather were genuine cowboys. She often did work around the ranch with him so really not much shakes her to her soul. Except for what happened when she had to run into town when I was only 8 months old. The ranch that she was raised on was almost 2 hours away from the nearest town. You had to drive north on a highway for 30 minutes, then you had to drive on a dirt road for another 45 minutes across the Montana high country to get to the ranch where she was raised. I'm emphasizing this because it not only shows how far out into the pretty much nowhere she lived at the time, but it plays into why this story becomes so disturbing. So like I said, my mum had to run into town to get some groceries and baby supplies for me. She was driving on the long and isolated dirt road back to the ranch when 
She reaches into her purse on the passenger seat to get something. It slips out of her hand and into the passenger footwell. Fair enough. She then has to stop the car so that she can safely retrieve what she had dropped. She grabs it and as she sits back up, she looks into the rearview mirror and sees a man about 100 feet behind the car running at her. Needless to say, she puts the car back into gear and she gets the heck out of there. As she's looking back at me in the car seat, making sure that I'm okay, she sees the guy give up running after her and run back into the ditch to hide. Of course, when she gets home, she tells her mom and dad, my grandparents, about what had happened and they are stunned. But here's where it gets really disturbing, at least psychologically. My mom didn't see any cars or trucks parked along that dirt road for the entire way to the ranch. She also didn't see any people walking along the highway or dirt road, which raises even more questions. Like, how did he get out there? Why was he out there? And even more disturbing, what would he have done to my mom or an eight-month-old me? My mom said that the more she thought about it, the more disturbing it became. I've only ever asked my mum about this story twice, and after the second time, she told me to never ask her about it again. And to be honest, I completely understand why. I get messed up thinking about it too, and I mean, I can only imagine how she felt having directly experienced it. When I was in high school, I had a really strange encounter riding my bike home from work one day. So when I was a senior in high school, I worked at a Target store from about 4pm until about 10pm, 4 or 5 nights a week. After helping close the store, Z out the registers and other final closing tasks, my co-workers and I were usually out of the building and on our way home before 10.30pm. The store was not too far from a bike path that also went close to my home. It took me about 15 to 20 minutes to ride my bike home from work, down a sort of small bike path and into a large subdivision. At about the midway point home, there was a section of the bike trail that went through an undeveloped field and was very poorly lit. I remember I was slowing down to change the radio station on my CD or Walkman or sort of radio thing, Yes, I'm dating myself here a bit, when suddenly I see a dark figure about maybe 100 feet or 30 meters away from me on my right start running at me from the dark field. Fight or flight instantly kicked in and I started riding my 18-speed mountain bike so fast that I felt like I could have qualified for the Tour de France. As I was escaping, I took a quick peek back and I saw a guy in black fully black, with a ski mask and everything, attempting to chase after me for a few moments. Needless to say, what was normally a 15 to 20 minute bike ride turned into a 5 minute top speed and top gear bike ride home. I also obviously didn't sleep well that night, but I still occasionally think about that encounter in my darker moments. So, this happened today and I really have no idea what to think about it. I, a 30 year old single female, live in a small town in Northern California. It's been pretty dreary weather the past couple of days, with scattered light showers after a surprisingly hot weekend last weekend. It's a very rural area, in fact you have to go to the neighbouring town for high school, groceries etc. But Anyways, I was on my way home just to drop off a few things and head out again. My road is connected two ways to the main road, almost like a loop, so I have two choices on how to get home. As I approach my little road from the main road from one direction, I notice stuff on the ground just at the turn off from the main road to my little road. It looked like roadkill, but as I drove over it and stopped to see, it was a black cow hoof and a single skinned cow leg and a large round organ of some sort. 
I'm assuming a stomach, all scattered close to one another and looked like they were just plopped there, not hit or dragged by a car because there was no blood around it or skid marks or anything. It was super weird, but I drove on thinking that, I don't know, maybe someone hit a cow or something. As I'm continuing on down this little road on the way to my driveway, probably a mile, I pass another thing on the road and stop to look closer. It's a, a whole pile, I mean a large pile of intestines sitting in the road. Again, almost like they were placed there, not dragged or splattered or anything. I keep going and I get to my driveway, then up to my house. I mention what I saw to my husband and he agrees that it's a bit weird and suggests that I should go the other way out to finish my errands instead of back near the guts and all that stuff on the road. I agree and I see nothing on the little road in the other direction. Well, my errands take me no more than 40 minutes max so I decide to take the same route as my original drive to see the stuff on the ground. When I get there, there's absolutely nothing there at all and I mean not even a mark where any of the body parts had been no stains no remnants absolutely nothing not one piece of anything not on the main road not on the little road I don't know so I'm just thinking about all the possibilities I guess I mean someone could have scooped up and disposed of the remains and also hosed down the road in 40 minutes between when I drove through. It's a, a very, very rural town though, so this is impressive response time by someone with the means to clean up remains so well like that. Maybe I just hallucinated the stuff on the road, but I have no history of mental illness or anything. Scavengers, maybe they got all the remains, but picked the road completely clean in 40 minutes? Not only just on the main road where the leg and hoof and the stomach were, but also a mile or so down my little semi-private road where the intestines were separately. Maybe the rain washed everything away. It's been barely a drizzle today and the amount and weight of the remains on the road had to be way too much for a little sprinkle to wash anything away. I don't know... It's been a gloomy, weird day, and this was the cherry on top in terms of weirdness. And I thought that I would share it here because, I don't know, it's just creepy. And I just cannot imagine how they just disappeared like that, with absolutely nothing to suggest that they were ever there. So my first experience with the paranormal was actually a string of experiences. I was 16 and my family had just moved into a new home. I loved the house, I had my own room that I picked myself, and I didn't feel any kind of hesitance while unpacking and decorating to make myself more at home. Everything was pretty great. At least for the first week anyway. After school, I would get home with my little brother about an hour before my mum would. And one day, I was the first one into the home. I threw my bag onto the kitchen table and found my cat stood frozen, staring at a door in the kitchen that led to our garage. I spoke to my cat. Hey, uh, what are you doing? I walked towards him, but before I could touch him, a woman's scream came from the garage and my cat sprinted from the room. And I followed, taking my little brother with me outside and calling my mum. My brother insisted though that he didn't hear anything and my mum suggested that I must have just imagined it. But I knew that it was real. Once my mum got home, we checked the house to find nothing. She suggested that I was stressed and watching too many scary movies. I didn't bother arguing any further, I could tell that I wasn't going to be believed. So I grabbed my bag and walked to my bedroom at the end of the hall. I stood in the doorway and froze in my tracks because my closet door was slid open and hanging from its track as if someone had tried to pull it off and my pillow was standing in the middle of the room. A flat flimsy pillow that I couldn't get to stand even if I wanted it to. 
I yelled for my mom and I said someone's been in my room. She came back, my little brother trailing behind her. I pointed in the room, only to find the pillow now laying flat, as it should have been the whole time. Sweetheart, you must have knocked it off the bed when you woke up this morning. She brushed it off, but I knew that I hadn't. And even if I had, how the heck was it standing like that? I played with the pillow for several minutes, trying to mimic the position that it had been in, but there is just no way that it could sit like that. It wasn't possible. I went to bed that night without a problem. While I did think that what had happened earlier that day was strange, I didn't lose sleep over it, but I was prone to waking throughout the night, so like clockwork, I woke at around 3 in the morning and got up to go to the bathroom. When I returned to the doorway to my bedroom, again, I froze. I could see a figure sitting on the edge of my bed. It had no features, just the shadow of a, a large man. I leaned forward, squinting my eyes, trying to adjust my vision to the darkness of my room. But before I could move any further, the figure stood and charged at me. I have never screamed so loud. My feet came out from under me and I hit the floor, my hand flipping on the light before I had lost my balance. When I turned around, nothing was there. My mom and my brother were there in an instant, wondering why I was screaming and now crying on the floor. I tried to explain, but you were dreaming, my mum told me. I was awake though, I was up, I tried to argue, but she shook her head. Oh, you must have been dreaming, she insisted. Go back to bed. I didn't sleep well that night, but the next day went fine. Until I was back home from school. The house suddenly didn't feel like home to me anymore, and my room did not feel like mine either. I felt like I was invading somebody else's space and I was apologetic. I attempted to make a Ouija board out of cardboard and a clear bottle cap. I was desperate to confirm my own experiences. I said hello quietly, waiting for a response, but there was nothing. I then said, Look, I'm sorry if we moved into your home. I'll be a good roommate. I'm very clean. I began to ramble, but the bottle cap never moved. I started to feel silly, looking down at this makeshift board, so I pushed it away and I just climbed into bed. That night, though, I heard something rattling around. I initially thought that it was a large house moth knocking itself into something. I flipped on my bedside lamp and noticed the board on the floor, only the bottle cap was now standing on its side, spinning like a quarter in circles. I let out a breath of air in disbelief and the cap instantly dropped, once again motionless. I jumped out of bed and grabbed the board, tearing it in half and shoving it in the trash. I kept my lamp on for about an hour before I started to feel tired again. Reluctantly, I flipped the lamp back off and I drifted back to sleep. Now at that time, I slept with a blindfold on, irritated by the smallest bit of light. So when I awoke again, feeling the cold air of my fan, I assumed that I had kicked my blanket off in my sleep and I felt around the bed trying to find it to cover myself again, but no luck. So I lifted my blindfold and was horrified to see my blanket standing tall above me. I moved quickly, attempting to throw my feet to the side and to run to the door, but the blanket fell and I was forced back to my mattress. A weight began suffocating me as if someone had just laid on top of me. I gasped for breath, trying to scream, but not a sound would escape my throat. I remember my eyelids fluttering as I lost consciousness from the lack of air. That morning, I awoke with my blindfold lifted, my blanket tossed to the side of the bed, and pain taking over my body instantly. And because of these things, I knew that I hadn't imagined it. I came out of my room and I couldn't stop myself from crying when I found my mum getting ready for work in the bathroom. I tried to explain, but she didn't believe me. She never believed me. You were dreaming, she said to me. You can stay home from school today. Just try and get some rest. I reluctantly nodded and I went back to bed, still scared to really go back to sleep. I laid stiff and waited for the sound of my mum and my brother leaving for the day. 
I heard the keys jingle and the doors close. I was alone, now in the home. I rolled onto my stomach and I cried into my pillow. I'm sorry about your mum, a voice said clearly beside me. I gasped and sat straight up. There was no one. I couldn't handle being alone there anymore. I got out of bed and I walked myself to school. Thankfully, we moved out of that home shortly after due to my mum getting married. And, strangely enough, all the activity instantly stopped. Much to my relief. This happened in 2005 in Southern California. We had just been evicted from our house and found ourselves at my nana's house again. I hadn't lived there since I was four years old, but here I was, sleeping on the floor of the second story with my mother and two brothers. We had left our former house with nothing but clothes and trash bags, and we moved the bags against the wall so that we all had room to sleep. The entire room was bare with no furniture, not even a curtain rod for the windows. So, it was just the four of us and our trash bags. The second floor had been an attic before they converted it. So, it ran the length of the house and was a wide and long room with two small storage closets that always gave me the creeps and a, a standard closet on one far end of the room. It was dark though and my brothers were sprawled far from me and my mum on one side of the room and us on the other. I was having trouble sleeping and... I remember that there was a storm with lightning that would light up the room occasionally from the flashing. And there was one large window facing the house's west side and one smaller window facing north. As I said, I really couldn't fall asleep that night and felt uneasy like an energy shift had happened in the room. I had seen things in that house before at that point but tried my best to chalk it up to my unease to nerves and stress. I scanned the room and made sure it was just us there. Nothing looked off, so I laid back down and closed my eyes again. This was before the cell phones of today, and we were too poor to afford any cell phones anyway, so I really had nothing to distract myself with in the dark, and I still had that strange feeling of something being off. I opened my eyes again and started to stare at the wall in front of me as I lay on my side with my back against the opposite wall when I began to focus on a black trash bag. It looked more prominent than the others for some reason, sort of off in some way. I remember a flash of lightning lighting up the room and seeing that that trash bag that I was focusing on was pitch black with no sort of glossing effect like the others. I was like, what the, what kind of trash bag is that? No one had a duffel bag. We all grabbed what we could and stuffed them into big hefty black bags. But all of a sudden, I felt my heart racing as I watched the trash bag move a little bit. Like, whatever it was, was crouching down facing the wall with its back to me, and shifting its weight trying to make itself look small. I can only describe it as something cloaked in the blackest material that I had ever seen. I pressed myself as close to my wall as possible, and didn't take my eyes off of it. I contemplated screaming and waking everyone up in the room, but then it shifted in its crouched pose again. I did what my nana always said to do when I was scared, and I started to recite the Lord's Prayer in Spanish in my head, just like she had taught me. It then seemed to start to turn its head very slowly, like it knew that I knew it was there. Words cannot describe the side profile of this thing. It had black skin and a nose like those silly 90s Halloween prosthetics, which sort of nose kits things. They used to have them back in the day anyway. It was long, bent and crooked and I could see the whites of its eyes bulging in such a, a hideous, abnormal way as it looked at me from the corner of its eye. I gasped loudly and looked around to shake my mum awake so I wouldn't be alone looking at this thing crouching in the dark. My mum was annoyed, naturally, that I had woken her up, and when I told her that there was something evil against the other wall, she got up angrily and snapped on the overhead light. But there was nothing there, nothing but the trash bags that we had brought with us. 
She told me to stop being a baby and to let her get some sleep, so I begged her to leave one of the closet lights on at least, and I practically clung onto her like a giant koala, which is embarrassing as I was 14 at the time, because whatever the heck that I had seen, it had scared me right to the bone. It didn't show itself to me ever again though, and that face, it haunts my nightmares sometimes. For years I told myself that it was just the stress of the move and the overall chaos that my life was in at the time. Until my siblings and I, we were reminiscing about our experiences at that house. And as I relayed this story to them, my sister cut me off and said, You saw that too? Like a witch thing? My brother chimed in, stating that he had a, a nearly identical experience but thought that it was a large pile of clothes on the floor when he saw it. My sister allegedly saw that thing crouched as a shadow one night when she lived on the second floor, alone. But when she had left, we moved in shortly after. And she said that she slept with the light on for weeks after her encounter. We all had seen it separately, but described it all the same. Hunched down or crouching with black skin and huge bulging eyes. Think of Jeepers Creepers too when he licks the bus window and a huge long crooked nose. I don't think that it was a witch, I think it was something very negative, that much I know. But something evil is up there and I think it showed itself to me that night. I lived there for four years and I had plenty of awful things happen, but thankfully I didn't see that thing again and haven't seen it since. And to be honest, I hope that I never do. So this story happened pretty recently, and for some context, me and my friends, we're all teens that like to explore and do stupid stuff, like normal teenagers do I guess. But one day we found this tunnel that was a drain under a busy road. We had to crouch and sit on our skateboards to explore it, since the height of the tunnel was short. As we're going deeper into this tunnel, it gets really dark and the flashlights from our phones, they can only reach about five feet in front of us. So we're pretty much blind to what we could come across until we're pretty close to it. In the tunnel, I remember the wall was painted in all red and had these sorts of sheets of metal with white handprints connected to cloth pins. We decided to keep on going until we reached what we thought was the dead end, but it was not. On the left was a, a more square tunnel compared to the rectangle shape that we were in. And in the distance of the connected tunnel, there was a bright light coming from the outside shining from above into a sort of red shopping cart with belongings in it. We slowly inched towards the light where this shopping cart was. The light turned out to be a big hole in the ground that we could crawl out of if we needed an escape. As we were about to pass the shopping cart, my friend who was in the lead was too afraid to go forward anymore. And I mean, it was pitch black five feet from where we were. I decided to take the lead and I keep going. I stepped past the shopping cart and stopped. I don't know what it was, but all of a sudden I was afraid. I just had a, a gut feeling that something was back there. I slowly moved back. I stopped. And I swear that I was seeing something move from deep in the darkness of the tunnel. Before I could put everything together, a loud echo of someone pounding an object on the walls of the tunnel struck me back, causing everybody to freak out and crawl out of the escape hole. We ran and once we got out, we were approached by a homeless man. He ran to us asking us what we were doing in there. We told him that we didn't mean any harm and that we were just exploring, but he explained to us that there's a man that apparently lives underground in that tunnel and that, allegedly, he would have killed us if we went any further. The man was apparently crazy and threw a rock at a poor guy's head before, almost killing him. Luckily, nobody was hurt from our group, but even still, it was scary and dangerous. It was fun, I admit. And I'm still glad that I experienced it, but still, it could have taken a turn for the worse. And that thought sits really heavily in my gut. So 
So me and my girlfriend, we went to Eastern State Penn pre-pandemic. And anyone who has been there will tell you that you basically pay to walk around a jail that is falling apart. It stinks, it's gross, and it's kind of dangerous. But the history of it is cool though. Me and my girlfriend decided to forego the tour and just see things on our own. It was cool at first. We walked around and looked through the cells. We ventured into the areas that weren't crumbling. It was pretty fun. And I'd say it was about maybe 4.30 in the afternoon. But there weren't a lot of people in there with us. It was still sunny out for July. We went to a certain cell block and all of a sudden I started to feel really ill. I just stood at the end because I didn't want to move. I felt like something didn't want me in there. She was halfway down the block though and in one of the cells talking and laughing. But then, all of a sudden, I watched as this thing came out of a cell, maybe like 40 feet in front of me. It was completely ink black, like a man fully made of black ink. That's the only way that my mind could process it at the time for some reason. I mean, it made no sense, but my brain had almost short-circuited or something. But it looked fully human and solid black. I couldn't see through it, and it had no features or face or anything. I have never been so scared in my life, and I couldn't run. My feet were glued to the floor. The feeling that this thing was giving off, though, was enough to make me sick. I felt this tightness in my chest and this overwhelming feeling of anxiety. I just kept thinking, I shouldn't be here. It doesn't want me here. I shouldn't be here. I remember it so vividly and I just kept repeating the words in my head. Me and this thing just stood there face to face for what must have been at least a solid minute. Then it just moved into another cell. When it was gone and out of sight, my brain had begun to fully process what I had just seen. My body jerked to life and I sprinted so quickly out of that cell block. I grabbed my girlfriend and we left the prison entirely. I still have nightmares about it, just facing off with it like that. The thoughts and the feelings were so intense that it wanted me gone that it's hard to explain. I just didn't belong there. That much I knew. I'm Haitian and my mom still has her roots in native culture. She said that it was never human to begin with. It was something made out of evil. I'm really not sure because it had a human form though and I also never usually buy into the cultural myths like that too because I'm an atheist. But this, this I will never ever forget. And quite honestly, I don't recommend going to Eastern State Penn. Back in 2021, my family took a trip to Lake Sanitla in North Carolina, a beautiful lake that's rich in Native American history and surrounded by mountain trails. We decided to go on one of these trails on an overcast day. Now, I am not an athletic person by any means and suffer from asthma, so I was behind the rest of my family by myself. And about almost halfway through the hike, I suddenly heard my sister yell my birth name, but it sounded like it was off the trail. She never calls me by my real name, just my nickname that I've had since I was a baby. But it sounded like she was scared, so I was very tempted to run off and find her. But I knew that my sister wasn't stupid. She wouldn't go off the trail, even in the case of an emergency. I tried to double the pace and I quickly caught up to the rest of my family. And my sister was there with them resting on some rocks next to a waterfall, chatting away and taking pictures. I asked my sister if she had called my name, but she didn't know what I was talking about. She had apparently been talking to our dad the whole time. So, I don't know what called my name that day, but I'm sure glad that I didn't listen to it. Because honestly, who knows what would have happened to me. I haven't been to that trail since this encounter. I don't have a clue what called my name. But if you're educated in Appalachian folklore, then please do give me some insight on what happened to me. So I was 16 when this happened. 
I was also working at the place where dreams go to die, Walmart. I obviously hated working there, but thankfully this encounter was the straw that broke the camel's back. Another thing that I should mention too is that I look a few years younger than I actually am. I have a bit of a baby face, so even though I was 16, I looked about 13. It was during the day when the incident happened. It was a pretty slow day, and I'd spent most of my shift wandering around, helping where I could. I was already done with everything in my department. I was in the middle of heading back to my area when a man approached me. He was a bit of a creepy dude, but I didn't want to be rude by not helping him, even though everything in me was telling me to walk away. But creepy guy was asking me to help him find a gift for his niece or something, so I asked him if he had any idea what he wanted to get his niece, and he said that he wasn't sure, so I took him to the kids section so that he could choose something. While I was browsing, he started asking for my name, if I lived in the city, how old I was, that sort of thing. I obviously wasn't overly keen on providing this information, so I was pretty vague when answering. Other times, I'd completely avoid the question altogether and try to redirect a conversation to his niece. It was evident, though, that he wasn't interested in discussing his niece, so he provided one-worded answers and went right back to his intrusive questioning. He started asking me more personal stuff too, like if I had a boyfriend, if I'd ever had sex before. Now, I was horrible at communicating when someone crossed a boundary. I hated confrontation and my manager sucked really badly. They'd give me all sorts of trouble for the stupidest things, which made me really anxious whenever I had to talk with them. As a result, I did everything I possibly could to avoid talking with them. Anyway, I asked if there was anything else that he needed. I just wanted to hurry and end this whole interaction. But of course, he told me that he needed a card and a bag to put the gift in. So I begrudgingly directed him to the card section. All the while, he upped the creep factor and began asking me extremely personal questions. He was now giving me compliments too. He told me how beautiful I was, how I had such a great looking butt. Keep in mind, I don't look a day over 13, and he knew my age too, and yet that didn't seem to stop the creep from making these crude remarks. While he picked out a bag and a card, I kept my distance, but I remember he kept giving me the best that I can equate it to is bedroom eyes. It made me sick to my stomach, but I figured that he'd eventually get everything that he needed, and he'd be on his merry way. He eventually got a card and a bag, and he asked me to lead him to the till since he didn't know where they were. Obviously he did, but I just sucked it up and directed him to the checkouts. When we got within walking distance of a till, I politely excused myself and felt relieved to finally get rid of him. Unfortunately though, he ran ahead of me and asked for my number, even going as far as making this horrible comment. It was, I like my girls nice and young, they can just keep going and going, you and I will have lots of fun. That made my skin absolutely crawl. I told him that I didn't have a phone. I did, of course, and it was sitting in my vest pocket. But he thankfully didn't seem to notice it. I was beyond paranoid, though, that he'd spot the phone and call me out on my lies. Despite being repeatedly told that I, in fact, did not have a phone, he kept insisting that I give him my number or a social media where he could contact me. It got to the point where I was backing away from him because... He'd gotten so close to me, I could even smell his breath. Unsurprisingly, he didn't take the hint and kept inching towards me. I want to know the real punch to the gut though. I had a couple of managers walk past and they definitely saw this guy harassing an underage employee and they did nothing to help. I was getting desperate. No one was coming to my aid which made me feel hopeless on top of it. I thought that I'd never get rid of this guy my saving grace was my manager walking through the front door before the creep got handsy with me. My manager was my absolute favorite person. He was pretty intimidating, used to serve in the military. He was a pretty big guy as well, pure muscle, could probably break me in two with one hand if he wanted to, but he was a total gentle giant. Whenever customers got rowdy with the employees, he'd always intervene. It was always hilarious too to see people who were red in the face deflate the moment that they saw him approaching. I spotted my manager though and gave him a look of desperation when he glanced over at me. 
and I cannot tell you how relieved I felt when I saw him make a beeline for us. He placed himself between me and the creepy dude, slapped on his customer service smile, and asked if he could assist the creep, since I was supposed to be on my break. I happily took the hint and practically ran to the back of the store. I went to the staff room and was shaking from the adrenaline and on the verge of crying. I was in the staff room for about 20 minutes before my manager called me into the office. He asked if I was okay and I said that I was shaken up but fine. He assured me that he'd have me working in the back for the next week, just to ensure that if the creep came back looking for me, he wouldn't be able to find me. He then told me that the guy kept asking where I went and what my number was, what my name was, but my manager told him that he couldn't release that information. My manager literally escorted the guy out of the store and watched him drive away before coming back to talk with me. Thankfully, I never did see the guy again. Then again, I left my previous job shortly after this encounter. I got another offer to work with my best friend at her dad's restaurant after I told her what happened, which I happily took. I admit that I was a little sad to leave, mainly because I really did adore my manager, but my hatred for Walmart and my fear of that dude was ultimately what pushed me to leave. About 10 years ago, there was four of us walking through the woods local to us. To get to the best entrance to the woods, you have to walk through a crematorium. There was me, Thomas, Lisa and Alice, and we had planned to go camping in the woods. So, we had been camping in these woods on many occasions. I had a very easygoing mum, so the parents of the other three would call my mum to ask if we were having a sleepover at my house. and. My mum, being nice, said yes. We were all 13 at the time. We were walking through the woods to get where we normally camped and on the way there we walked past a man with an axe. He didn't speak and just sort of stared us out so we walked on and just sort of brushed it off. A little bit creeped out but didn't think too much of it. The night went on as you would expect, having fun trying to drink and not be sick and just having a laugh with friends. We went into the tent to go to sleep at about 3 in the morning, but about 20 minutes later, we heard what sounded like trees being axed down. The sound echoed around the woods and made us all alert. This went on for about 5 minutes. Then, as soon as it sort of started to finish, Thomas joked about the man with the axe and Alice got rather upset with him. Time passed and just as we were about to go to sleep, we suddenly heard footsteps. They were circling around our tent and we all sat up in shock and started to panic. We heard logs of wood being dropped outside of our tent. We could actually feel the wood as it struck the ground. We all gained the courage to finally look out of the tent, peering out. He was there, sat on the floor, staring into the tent as we opened it. We just all bailed as soon as we saw that and ran as fast as we could from them into the woods. We never did go back to get our stuff or anything, not that we really brought too much, but all of this time, all the times that I've been out there since, I never saw him again. The weird thing too was that this guy, he never seemed to talk. He was just sitting there, staring at us in the tent. Ten years on and I still think about that night and exactly what that guy may have been up to. So a few days back, I went into a mall a bit far from my house and things were really good that day but then while I was in a KFC branch, someone on Grinder with a blank profile messaged me while waiting for my food on the table but I shrugged it off and he didn't send me any pictures, just messages saying hi to me and asked if he could give me the best and you can imagine what he said I would ever have. Seeing that I'm in a public place and absolutely do not have the mood to be horny, I did not reply and then proceeded to eat my meal. After eating, I then left the mall while bringing the items that I brought from there and waited for a ride to go home. It was dark, around 8pm at that time, so I had to be vigilant on my surroundings. While looking out on the road, the same guy messages me and asks me where I am currently. 
and I saw suddenly that his distance from me was only 70 meters away from where I was standing. This was definitely getting a bit worse, so I closed the app immediately and proceeded to continue ignoring him. Around five minutes later, a guy stood beside me though, trying to act sort of unsuspicious I think, even though my gut feelings are telling me that something was wrong. He looked like he was around maybe late 30s, I'm 18 by the way, and a bit bigger than me, both height and weight. I started to get goosebumps while standing beside him and it only got worse when he tapped on my shoulder and asked if he could do those things that he mentioned to me before. I froze, having no idea what to do, well extremely anxious, but then I suddenly just, well, punched him in the face when he started trying to grab my crotch and tried to unbutton my pants. I then pushed him off of me hard, he was now down on the ground and I ran away as far as I could. But then, I saw him chasing me. Luckily a taxi drove nearby and I rushed inside as quickly as I could. I knew that it was him who was the guy that had been spamming messages on Grinder because his Grinder profile tells me that he's only literally one meter away. I blocked the profile and I logged out of the app after that. But what I realized is that I wasn't logged out at the time, therefore my location was exposed and my profile picture in the app was my face which wasn't covered, meaning that it was easy for me to be identified. Also, the location of the mall is pretty terrible as there isn't a lot of lights around it and it's surrounded by really terrible looking houses and roads too. Worse yet is that there weren't really many people around where I stood at the time and it was pretty dark where we were too, meaning I wasn't really able to identify the man correctly to report him to the local authorities unfortunately, but also it was the perfect place for a crime. This happened to me and my siblings when we were very young, but the memory is still very vivid. This was the most intense paranormal experience that I've had in my life, and I just wanted to get it out there. So, to start, the house that we lived in at the time was definitely haunted. My sister told me much later on that she would hear someone walking up the stairs and then a shadowy figure would stand in a doorway sometimes. I heard the footsteps back then too, but I'd always assumed that it was just her walking around. She didn't tell me until much later, obviously, as she didn't want to scare me. But the house was very creepy at night. I always felt a, a profound sense of being watched whenever I would go past certain spots. It was completely different when I got back home to mum's house. I wasn't afraid of the dark and I would still get up at night to go to the bathroom but it always felt very scary to do so and I would always hurry as quickly as I could. But anyway, I was 10, my big sister was 13 and my little brother was 8. I begged my older sister to let us play with a Ouija board or keychain toy that she had because I was fascinated by ghosts and the supernatural. I wasn't really scared of them at all, in fact. I loved them a lot and only thought that they were interesting, I guess you could say. It took a whole lot of convincing, but eventually she agreed to play with the board. So we all sat down at the kitchen table and my sister and I put our fingers on the planchette and asked if anybody was there, to which it almost immediately said yes. We spent some time arguing that the other was definitely moving it and just asking some benign questions I don't really remember. But after a bit, we started getting scared, so we said let's stop. The planchette immediately and harshly moved to no though, and we instantly pulled our hands back. As soon as we did, we all hear this terrible and horrible screeching or scream, one that did not sound human at all. We each describe it a little bit differently from one another, but we all heard it at once, that was for sure. We ran as fast as we could to the other room, where we all sat sort of huddled on the couch for a long time. Finally, I asked if anybody else had heard that, to which they all just nodded. We stayed that way for hours too, until my dad came home. We didn't tell him about it, and nothing really ever came of it too, but it was terrifying. So terrifying that, to this day, 
recalling it always gives me chills. Also, for info on the actual sound, it was definitely not a cat. We didn't live near the woods either. We lived right in the middle of the city, so no mountain lion or anything like that too. It didn't sound like an animal call actually, but my brother said that it sort of sounded like the sound of a bunch of bats, but much, much louder. The intensity of the sound was part of it, and like someone screaming right inside of the kitchen. To me, it was a lot like a woman's scream, but distorted, like it was more than one voice maybe. To those who just don't want to believe it's anything otherworldly, well, yeah, that's totally okay, and I don't know what else to say to you, I'm just telling you my experience. That's totally your choice, and... Like I said, I'm just telling my story for those who might be interested. So I'm staying at my friend's house in Tennessee over winter break. And tonight I helped her feed the neighbor's dogs because they were out of town. Her house is in a, a somewhat rural area. There's clusters of homes kind of sort of spread out across fields, forests and lake areas. All very beautiful and lots of wildlife. Anyways, it's about 9pm and it's way past sunset. It's quite dark and we're walking the short distance from the neighbor's house back to hers. We're on a road that sort of directly next to us is a small set of woods sloping down into the lake. I'm a little nervous about it so I make a joke like, that forest is kind of creeping me out. Imagine if there's a skinwalker in there. My friend said it's bad luck to share it or say it, but I didn't know that until after this event, and I'm not taking any chances, so she laughs and gobbles like a turkey loudly into the forest. She's like this, and I jokingly say, don't do that, it might attract one. And not even five seconds later, we hear an identical gobble back at us from the forest. It was definitely not an echo to, and... There was no light in there, no paths, and it was very cold, like 30 degrees, so I can't imagine anyone would be out there. But I just remember saying, oh my goodness, then sprinting as fast as I could back to the house. I don't think I've ever run so fast or meaningfully, too. I didn't turn back, and I was completely out of breath when we got back to the house. My friend thought the whole thing was kind of funny, but also freaky, but I just cannot get over the fact that we heard that sound repeated back at us. And there's just no way that an animal would make that kind of noise. Especially not so accurately. Anyway, does anyone know what this might be? Maybe it was just someone trying to be funny or something? I don't know. I'm really confused by it and it was a, a really freaky situation. When I was a kid in Mexico, we loved to play hide and seek with all the kids in the neighborhood at night. The houses were so close together in fact that you could jump from roof to roof and with everybody sort of knowing each other and being friendly, they wouldn't mind if we did get on the roof. We had my cousins come over for dinner and our parents were just out in the porch talking, having a couple of drinks. Some of the kids, they came over and asked if we wanted to play. It was already dark out, and this is when we especially liked to play, so we agreed. And there was this one girl, too, that I had a thing for at the time, and they also happened to join that night, and I knew that if I could get her alone, I might have a chance to kiss her. I knew that she liked me, too, so it would work out. We all gathered in the middle of the street, and we randomly chose who would count, then all the other kids would run and hide. So as the kids started counting, I looked at the girl waving at her to come follow me. Holding my hand, I led her to my aunt's house, which was vacant at the time. She was on vacation and I knew the house was empty. I didn't see any other kids go in there. The front door was locked, so we ran to the back and checked if it was locked too. And it was, but at the back of the house, my aunt had an old washing machine that I knew that we could get on the roof from there. I helped her up first and... When we got up, we could hear someone coming and I told her to go and hide and she ran off. I was able to make it on the roof not long after. And I knew for sure that somebody was searching the house next to my aunt's. It was having the second story redone and I hid in a sort of half-completed bathroom. I thought that I was alone too, but at some point I felt someone grab my hand. 
It was pitch black in there. I couldn't see who it was, but I heard a soft voice whisper. It's just me, don't worry. It was most definitely her, so she squeezed my hand a little bit more. We hid for some time, and it was great. But then, from afar, we could all hear the kids saying, we give up, and we had won the round. I came out of the bathroom and looked down at the street where all the other kids were. And that was when I saw her, clear as day, looking at me. I froze. If she was down there, then whose hand was I holding? Slowly turning my head, I could still feel the grip of whoever's hand I was holding with it, still being dark, and all I could manage to see was the faint outline of someone with, like, glowing sort of red eyes looking right in my face. When I say glowing, I don't mean, like, fully glowing, but they look sort of a bit red. At that, I absolutely panicked. I got down from the roof and I jumped down to where the kids were, and they were all pointing up and behind me, asking me who that was. They could see the outline of someone up there too, and also what looked like red eyes. We stopped playing immediately and went inside one of the other kids' houses. We talked about what we saw, but only briefly before going back outside again. But when we did, whoever was there was now gone. So this is the most wild and crazy thing that I've ever experienced. And I know that it sounds absolutely insane, but I just have to tell someone. And I really would like to try and find some answers for whatever the heck this was. So when I was 20 years old, I was driving past Parker, Arizona, when my boyfriend accidentally took a wrong turn. We quickly realized something was wrong too, because as soon as we turned that corner... It was like everything just went dark. Like there was absolutely no sun anywhere. Keep in mind, it was about 1 or 2 p.m. in the spring. There's no mountains anywhere or large trees or anything. Nothing that could cast like a massive shadow or anything. It was clear blue skies and then all of a sudden it was just pitch black. No buildings or noises, just blank emptiness. We turned the headlights on in fact because it was that dark when... All of a sudden, there was a, a big white sign on the side of what I believe was a road. On the side, it said, in big letters, They're here. Turn around. Now. We both looked at each other and we just said, yeah, to heck with that. And we quickly turned around. After a while, we found the freeway again and it was honestly like the sun just came back on. We went home and... We decided that we would just probably never speak about it to anyone because it was just so weird. But to be honest, I've been haunted by this experience, this really weird and creepy thing that happened to us my whole life and still to this day I just have no idea what to think about it. I'm a 22 year old female now and I still get goosebumps thinking about the situation and whether or not I would even be here today had I not been such an untrusting child. So I used to ride my bike around my neighborhood and through the local parks a lot when I was younger, being a generally safe area at the time, not so much now but I digress, my parents felt comfortable with me riding my bike alone as long as I stayed nearby. One summer afternoon, when I was 10 years old or so, I can't be certain as it was a long time ago, but it was around 9 or 10, I decided to ride my bike through the park near my elementary school. I ended up running into a friend and her mum at the playground there and spent a bit of time with them before they left. Looking back, I don't recall noticing anyone lingering nearby, but I was an oblivious kid having fun at the park, so they very well could have been, but I just didn't see them. Anyway, I wasn't really having much fun at the park by myself, so I decided to get back on my bike. It was then, though, that a man, maybe late 30s or 40s, approached me pretty much out of nowhere. I was sitting on my bike, kickstand still down, when he came up to me and asked me what my name was. I was a very shy kid, so I don't think that I said anything in response, but he didn't seem to care. He told me that I was a very pretty little girl and that... 
he had a daughter my age that I could come play with. In addition to being extremely shy, my parents had also taught me about the whole stranger danger thing, so I wasn't about to go with this man. After I shook my head at him, I remember him smiling at me in the most unnerving way before putting his hand on my shoulder. I felt uncomfortable the whole encounter, but it wasn't until this moment that I really felt afraid. I quickly kicked the kickstand up and pedaled away as fast as I could manage. I didn't bother looking back until I made it onto the streets just outside of the park. He thankfully hadn't followed me, but I still felt scared, so I went home. I never told my parents or anybody else about this encounter. I know that I probably should have, but for some reason my kid brain thought that I would get in trouble and not be allowed to ride my bike anymore, so I decided to just forget about it. Looking back now, it makes me feel nauseous to think about what might have happened to me had I gone with that man or hesitated to pedal away. I'm very thankful that my parents had been serious about teaching me not to talk to or go out with strangers. I'm maybe even a bit thankful for my social anxiety as, honestly, it probably saved my skin that day. So I think that this all started with the nightmares. I've had a history in the past with ghosts and ghouls. A ghost attached itself to my brother when we were younger and would angrily throw things at him. We named her Cadence. My sister said Cadence would play hide and seek with her, showing up in the corner of her eye only to duck out of view when my sister would turn to look at her. And when I moved out at 16, Cadence didn't follow me. And this, whatever I'm dealing with, is something different, more negative. It started earlier this week, like I said, with the nightmares. The first one was about Kisaragi Station. If you don't know what it is, you can look it up, but I encountered many people at the station, and when I got on, I arrived at a giant field with a dog. I don't really remember much after that. I also don't remember the second nightmare. The third, however, was yesterday night. In it, I was being chased through a small portal under some stairs. Writing this now, I'm realizing that my last apartment had a staircase with a giant hole under it too. My cat ran under there once and I felt nearly feral with primal fear that gripped me when I got close to that hole, but anyway, in the nightmare, the person chasing me was a cannibal. I don't know how I knew, but I just knew it in the dream and we eventually came to a standoff. I was really close to her, but just out of her sight, and she was sort of looking away, but all she had to do was turn and she would see me. And she did. She turned slowly, eyes wide as she stared at me. I stared back in complete terror. She saw me and reached out to me, grabbing my hand harshly. And I woke up, slowly, filled with chest-crunching terror. I could still feel the woman's grip on my hand as I woke up, in fact, nearly crushing my fingers. For context, I sleep curled up every night, sometimes on my back, but never with my hand anywhere near the edge of my full-sized bed. But I woke up with my hand dangling off the side of my bed, reaching out. I suddenly felt eyes on me from the closet and stared. With complete certainty, the only thought that I had was demon. Spooked like heck, I stayed awake and considered asking my Catholic roommate to bless my room, or at least the apartment. Silly, right? But my roommate had done it before, and it was all fine. That is, until my cat broke their Mary statue. After the statue broke, that was when the smell started, like something had rotted in our apartment. My roommate's senior cat started getting nervous, too. She used to never meow, but she meows constantly now, and one time, we even heard her on the other side of the apartment while we were checking the mail, and we just heard her screeching like crazy. Confused, we rushed back over to our apartment on the other floor and opened our apartment door to find the cat staring at the door and practically howling at it. This morning, we also found a huge blood stain on my roommate's pillow. Frowning, I checked her cat over because we thought maybe the cat had bled on it, but she was spotless. My roommate shrugged it off and eventually we just washed the bloodstains off. 
but that was definitely really weird. Anyway, but what do you guys think? Is this a demon? Can anyone give me some guidance on how to handle this? I feel like I'm going crazy over all of this and I'd really like some help. When I was a kid, for a long time, my family and I lived in an apartment building in Chicago. In this building, we experienced, well, many weird things that felt sort of evil, I guess. One of the experiences that I had, I wanted to share with all of you. So, to get into this apartment building, you sort of had to enter through a gate. After entering the gate, you would just follow the cemented path with what would probably take maybe five seconds to get to some stairs going up the stairs, you would see windows to the first floor apartment straight ahead. Looking to the right, there would be a door that would allow you to enter the apartment complex. And now, entering through this door would take you to an extremely small room with two doors. The door to the left would take you to the first floor apartment. The door to the right would take you to the apartment where I lived, the second floor. As you entered through the door to the right, it would lead to an almost spiral staircase. After reaching the top of the stairs, you would yet again reach another door which would actually take you fully inside the second floor apartment. Opening the door, you would immediately see the living room. So one afternoon, I was home alone watching anime in the living room. I was maybe 15 when this happened and I remember hearing someone open up the first door to get into the building and the second door to get into the second floor apartment. I began to hear someone walk up the stairs at this time of day, I was under the assumption that either my mum was done with work or my brother was done with wrestling practice, getting home, which I was excited to not be home by myself. As the footsteps get closer to the door, I glanced at the bottom of the door, which I then saw a shadow there. Usually at this moment, I would hear keys as someone would be preparing to unlock the door. But in this incident, I didn't. I just saw a, a shadow under the door. I also started to hear like a slow scratching sound starting from the top of the door to the bottom. I honestly thought that my brother was being an idiot, playing a prank on me, so I just let it be and continued watching TV. As I was watching TV, I noticed the scratching continued on the door, getting more and more intense, and the shadow of someone was still present under the door. At this point, I was getting pretty annoyed too because I was like, dude, I'm trying to watch TV, quit playing games with me. So I got up from the couch and went to the door and I smashed it open. But as I sort of swung it open, I looked around and I didn't see my mum or my brother or anyone. So then I thought, this idiot is behind the door. So I checked behind the door and no one was there either. I did check the back of the door though and I did see scratch marks on my door. At this, my heart started racing and I ran down the stairs and ran out of my apartment, called my brother up and he was still at wrestling and my mum was still out too. So then, the question is, who the heck was scratching at my door like that? So I was 8 in 1994 and living in Staten Island. Back then I would walk to the store by myself. My parents didn't really watch me and sometimes would even ask me to buy them cigarettes. And one time I was walking and an old like 70s brown Buick was following me slowly. Then close to the store he pulled up next to me and was trying to get me to help him with something. I was a pretty smart kid who could take care of herself probably from being left alone so often, so I knew that this was really shady. I ran a few blocks until I got to the store and went inside, and a few minutes later, he walks in and is following me through the aisles. I quickly thought to tell the clerk, but I didn't trust him either. I'd already had a lot of bad things happen to me at this point in my life and didn't really trust anyone, so then I thought to use the payphone and call my parents collect. So that's what I did and really loudly said that I don't feel safe and someone's following me. The dude ran out of the store so quickly after that. My dad picked me up and he spent the rest of the day looking for this car and I didn't get the license plate so we never found him. 
But I think about this a lot because it's not like he gave up after that too. I'm sure that he must have found a victim eventually and to me that's perhaps the most heartbreaking thing about this is that I couldn't stop that. So last night, I was skiing and camping out of my RV in an unofficial secret spot. High in the Sierra Nevadas of California, the location was right next to one of the most imposing peaks of the area, at the base of which was a frozen lake and resort closed for the season. Sparse trees surrounded the lake and a sort of pillowy fog hung over the icy expanse at dawn and dusk. Obscured by banks of snow from the adjacent highway, plow drivers had only bothered to clear a small portion of the road into this resort. It was the perfect place to hide out for a few nights. As soon as I tucked into bed, I started to hear the strange noises again though. This time, they wouldn't stop. From the absolute darkness and the otherwise total silence of a blanket of snow, I swore that I could hear something moving. Not human footsteps, but it sounded like, I don't know, two snow shovels piercing the ground. Quietly but quickly it traveled, through my open windows, I suddenly felt an intense feeling of being watched as well. Whatever this was, it came from towards the lake, a path which is covered in three feet of powder. The noises got louder until it was right up to the side of my window. Terrified and afraid to even make a sound, I lay in my bed watching and listening. Only a thin bug screen separated me from this creature in the pitch darkness. On a night without even a breath of wind to cause the sensation, I felt my RV pitch from side to side all of a sudden. It had climbed to the top and as it clambered about, I heard the now familiar noise of the night's frozen dew cracking under its weight. I could hear the ice fragments shed off the edges of my home and burst upon hitting the ground. I say familiar too because I had heard these noises before. On the first night, ice had also fallen with the sound of footsteps and the shaking of the RV. Thinking that it was a person up to no good, I charged outside with a flashlight and a knife. After all, the paranormal usually has a logical explanation, right? Examining the site carefully though, there wasn't so much as a, a new print in the snow. Satisfied and with the noises gone, I slept unperturbed for the rest of the night. The second night, my brother slept in the room and I heard the ice crack again but no more, neither compared to this third night. Judging from the amount the RV rocked as the entity moved, it was lightweight I would guess and agile. It was clever enough to completely stop moving as a car from the highway approached as well, long before lights would dimly illuminate the campsite even. It watched me, even when it seemed to stop. It seemed to climb down from the roof. I could hear its snow shovel feet crunch into the ground as it began to sort of pace around my camper I would guess. The creature alternated from roof and sides and it was then that I realized that it was looking for a way in. Breaking free from my petrification, I gently rolled over in bed and shut the two windows next to my head covering them with the blinds. It noticed. I immediately heard the shoveling retreat. It didn't leave altogether. Straining my ears, I could tell that it was pacing about, maybe 30 yards away. Even though there was no wind, what sounded like a metal sign sort of clanging against a tree persisted. I tiptoed to my knife and clutched it against me, and eventually I fell into a, a fitful sleep like that. I had a pleasant dream about my grandparents that night. At the end, it changed though. I was on the couch of the camper and from a roof vent above me a, a dark ooze draped into my space. Gathering my courage I unsheathed my knife and thrust at the shape with a shout. To my surprise I was still in bed. My knife was sheathed and I had just stabbed a guitar I think. Still it was too topically relevant of a dream and I wanted to stay in sleep but I also didn't want to be around whatever this was anymore. I brandished my knife and headlamp, bursting out of my door. My light whipped wildly about, looking for any evidence of this creature that had visited. But there was nothing. No footsteps, no roof ice, nothing on the ground. No metal sign attached to any tree for clanging. 
there was literally nothing. And so it was at this point that I jumped into the driver's seat and I just got out of there. I slept at a nearby populated campsite until dawn and not a single noise, even with the window wide open. So what was that thing? What did it want? Or am I just going crazy? Surely there must be an explanation for what I just experienced, but I don't know. I'm not so sure, to be honest. As I share this, my mind keeps going back to the dream of the darkness oozing in through the ceiling. Since I slept in the populated campsite with that incident, I believe that it's gone. I keep a Nazar amulet watching my bed for these kinds of uh, superstitious reasons, I guess. It might sound silly, but... I'd be lying if I said that I wasn't afraid to go to bed tonight. So my parents got divorced when I was 12 and my mum moved us into a small town in the Pennsylvania mountains. After a few months of living there, I went back to live with my dad in Texas. Ever since then though, I've heard these voices of people that I know calling me into the woods. It's been almost eight years now and it's only when I'm alone but not every time too that I'm alone and it seems to only happen here in Texas. It's weird but I never even considered that it was maybe something to be concerned about until recently I guess. It was just something that happened. I even followed the voice once and only thought that it was kind of weird that I had heard my dad screaming for me if he didn't actually call me because I got home later and asked him about it. I don't know if this is related to or not, but remembering that it was what sparked this post, a, a few years ago I was about a mile out into the woods in Pennsylvania when I zoned out for a minute. When I zoned in I heard a, a stick snap and... I looked over to see a, a white-tailed doe staring at me from about maybe 10 feet away and it sort of looked almost as if it had been trying to sneak closer to me when I looked at it. I just sort of backed away from it and went down the mountain but as I was backing away it, it looked at me with a, a sentience that I don't know it's hard to explain. I'm not entirely sure what to make of any of this now but I am looking back on all the times that I just sort of brushed it off as normal and now rethinking things. But what do you guys think? Should I follow the voices? So I was homeless for a couple of years and parked to sleep at a campsite up north of where I am. I pulled in, parked, fed the cats and started to cook and relax when all of a sudden flashlights appeared in my face, four of them looking in my windows so I assumed it was rangers asking me to move since the campsite was technically closed. I rolled down my window a bit and asked what was up and apparently it was a family of four also parked and camping. They had a fire going and a dog so I figured things were okay here but there was a, a really weird feeling about it. My boyfriend at the time decided to try and befriend them and we got out to chat and they asked a, a lot of very pointed personal questions. Are you married? Do you live around here? Do you have any kids? But actually it was their two kids asking all the questions. They spoke like adults too which made me assume maybe trauma was a real part of their life or something. At some point though the kids put themselves to bed by basically going, Mom, Dad, we're headed to bed. That seemed a bit weird to me, but whatever. But it got way worse from here, though. They talked about their converted truck that they lived in. Apparently, the kids shared a bed, and a key point that they made was the van was soundproof. They really wanted to play with our cats, but no such luck. The husband and wife, I only remember the dude said his name was Scooter, which, really? Scooter, of all names? Also, the daughter's name was Olivia and the son Skeeter. I know, it sounds fake, right? But they started to try and separate me and my boyfriend, saying stuff like, let's walk to the river, let's go look at the car, and things like this. They were really interested in hearing about any injuries that we had too. And at some point, they started letting the fire go out and even started sort of standing behind us a lot. 
and that was enough for me. We left some stuff behind and we got into the car, started it up and just talked like, what the heck was that? It took two minutes for the woman to walk up to the van and ask if we were leaving. We said no obviously and that we were just cold. She asked to sit in behind us and I asked why. She didn't answer and asked if she could sit with us or on my lap and again that was really weird and I asked why. She didn't answer again. She said that we can't leave her there because her husband beats her and so I asked if she wanted the police and she didn't answer. Pulled out a cigarette and lit up, leaning against the door of our car and we just sort of looked at each other and it was then that I heard someone douse the fire. It was then that I said, baby, just out of so much nervousness, which is when I found out my boyfriend was suspicious from the beginning and didn't think to say anything until now, only to add that if I had stayed and not followed him to the car, he would have just left me there. He was a waste of space, but before I could process it, I heard the husband grab something off the fire tool set. One thing that I noticed in there was a large red axe and I just got tunnel vision and I hit the gas at that. I felt this woman pounce off the side of my van as we pulled away and just as we got on the road, an ambulance was behind us with its lights flashing. I wasn't about to stop for it. You know how easy it is to buy emergency lights for any car on Amazon, right? No thanks. But the ambulance turned off to a dead end road, eventually after a while of demon driving into town that is. We never heard a siren, looked it up and the aforementioned river was two and a half miles into the dense woods so pretty isolated. Apparently a lot of people go missing out there too and I often wonder if perhaps these guys are to blame. So my whole life, I think that I've known that my house is haunted by something, but it's always just been pretty mild stuff. But this past year, things have escalated a lot and it's starting to get concerning. I have no clue what this thing is or how to get rid of it to be honest, so I'm going to give you guys a lot of things that it can do and hopefully one of you will know how to get rid of it. For context, we built my house on a lot that previously had a crack house on it and we moved in when I was five. Also important to know is that my room is at the end of a carpeted hallway with my parents' room directly across from it. Now, probably a year or so after we moved in, I started hearing footsteps on the carpet leading up the hallway to my room. When they got to the door, they would stop and restart at the end of the hall. There was extremely squeaky hardwood right before the carpet, so I would have heard it if it was my parents or siblings. My siblings... They slept in the basement and would have had to have crossed the hardwood to get to the hallway. When I was probably around seven, I also saw a pale face outside of my bedroom window that ducked out of view when I saw it. I've always constantly felt watched too and I feel like if I don't watch my back, something's about to get me. I'm 19 now and still can't shake that feeling but I find my belongings in my room in different spots when I left them and some fairly large things have entirely disappeared. This doesn't happen to me outside of that room though, which is weird, but things have fallen off of my wall, fallen over, etc. on their own and on occasion, also a loud clap noise precedes stuff moving. I've seen it twice, but both times as a, a sort of shadow figure one time sprinting directly at me in my backyard, disappearing about four feet from me, and another time crossing my house into the hallway my room is in. The second time too, my dog was looking up at it and following it into the hallway even. One time, it turned on our vacuum that was in a closet and not plugged in. It took me about three minutes to figure out where it was coming from and when I opened the door to the closet, it immediately turned off. About 20 minutes later, it turned on again, this time only lasting about 30 seconds. But the weird thing is that there aren't any outlets in that closet at all, and I've tried to turn it on without plugging it in, just in case that was a feature that I didn't know about, but it obviously didn't work. This one also may not be as compelling, I know, but TikTok and Snapchat filters they rely on detecting a face will often detect one in the hallway, but one time going into my room even. I was sleeping in my parents' room recently too and they were out of town and they have a, a nicer bed and 
I heard rapid footsteps that walked right up next to me faster than I could react to open my eyes, and when I did, nothing was there. This one is strange too because it's the first time that I've heard the footsteps since I was like 11 and I haven't heard them since. One time I also fell asleep on the phone with someone and in the morning she told me that she heard a little girl whispering in the microphone while I was asleep. She said that when she asked if the whispering was me, she heard a woman screaming into the mic and at which point she just hung up. I'm also not sure if this one is related, but my older sister, 25 years old, said that she saw the hat man in our last house. She was 10 and 11 years old when we lived there, and my dog sometimes would growl and bark at something that no one could see, and I don't know if that's enough information about it, but I'd very much like to know if anybody can tell me what this is and what the heck I should do about it, because like I said, it's escalated dramatically in the last year and it's starting to scare me. So this happened probably around 14 years ago when I was 17. I was in university in California. I graduated high school early so I started at university early as well. And I used to go to a local Starbucks by my campus in my free time to study because it was hard for me to focus at home. I remember this older guy used to come in a lot too and just sit alone at a table, always facing me with one small coffee and he would always just stare at me. It made me really uncomfortable but I was too young to think about reporting it because I didn't think there was anything to report to be honest. I mean, he was just staring, not approaching me or anything. In fact, I thought some of it was just in my head to be honest. But I began to notice that sometimes he would leave around the same time that I did. With this Starbucks, the parking was mostly on the level ground of a free parking structure that was around the corner from the shop and it was usually super easy to get a spot right in front so you could actually see your car from the street in the structure. I usually parked there and I never felt particularly unsafe except when I would realize that he was following me out. I began to note what his car looked like and where he would park. It would usually be a little ways away from me and I would wait for him to leave before I went anywhere because I didn't want him to follow me or anything. One afternoon though, I was heading to my car and I noticed that he had parked right next to me. The passenger side of the car was by my driver's side and it was very close. I didn't see him but I remember just having the most awful feeling in the pit of my stomach when I realized that he had parked so close. I rushed to get into my car and it was at that moment that I shut the door that I realized that he was following me and approaching the driver's side of my vehicle. He had gotten as far as the door when I quickly locked it and thankfully I did it fast enough because he tried to open my door a second later. No words mind you, no trying to get my attention or anything. He literally just yanked on the door handle as aggressively as he could. I immediately backed out of the spot and floored it out of the structure. I got caught at a red light outside the structure though, which gave this guy enough time to catch up to me in his car. I honestly don't know why I didn't call the cops at this point, but I remember trying to rationalize what was going on in my head and thinking that maybe I was making a big deal out of nothing, even though the man had literally just tried to open my car door aggressively like that. I know it's stupid, but I was 17. If it were me now at 31, you bet your bottom dollar, I would have driven straight to the nearest police station. Thankfully though, I was aware enough that I needed to lose him before I went home, so I turned into a series of residential streets to see if he would follow me. He did. I just sped up and made a bunch of random turns until I was sure that I had lost him. Then, finally, I drove home and never went back to that Starbucks ever again. This happened a few months back. I, a 37 year old male, currently moved back in with my senior parents. My parents have lived in the same neighborhood for almost 35 years now. It's quite nice and upscale and the houses don't go up for sale often, so I've known all the neighbors for years. Recently though, the house directly next door was sold from grandmother to grandson, so since it's been vacant a little while, the cleanup began this summer and skipped to the end of summer, 
my mother and I are outside on the porch smoking and the grandmother next door had just up and started doing some landscaping in the front yard alone. We exchanged hellos and she went digging in the flowers, I think. About ten minutes later, though, a disheveled-looking tall, skinny lady starts strolling through the neighborhood with luggage and a backpack. Now, this might be normal where you live, but it was not in this neighborhood. We are not really on the beaten path anywhere. Like, you would need a reason to go into my area. It's not a shortcut anywhere or anything like that. And anyway, immediately everybody was uneasy. Her actions and behavior just made my gut scream crazy or high as a kite on hard drugs or something. She passed our porch and goes straight to the edge of the neighbor's yard and starts talking loudly. I keyed up starting to ready myself. Then she approached closer to my neighbor, continued talking, then backed up to the edge of the yard. She continues talking loudly and then repeats the same behavior, only this time she gets closer. Then back to the street a third time, even closer again. I'm a pretty big guy and am heavily tattooed, so I'm fairly intimidating looking. And I know it, although I'm a big teddy bear to be honest, but I get up and walk to the end of the porch for a better look and this crazy chick goes in for a fourth time and got right next to my neighbor at this point and she looks scared, like my neighbor looked really scared. So I got up and yelled at the lady after taking off my shirt and I was just like, hey, can I help you? Do you need something? If not, you should keep moving. No lie, I think she totally didn't realize that other people are outside in close proximity, but at that, she absolutely took off. She quickly vanished, and it was obvious that she was up to something. Thankfully, we haven't seen her since then, or anything like it again. So I, a 23-year-old female, have been living at my house since I was born. Seven years back, we constructed a new outhouse with minimal furniture, which is probably about 20 meters away from the main home. Since construction, I've used the outhouse more than any of my other family members to study and attend online lectures to avoid getting distracted. But ever since 2021, I've witnessed subtle oddities, I guess you could say, during my time there. For instance, on January of 2021, the war clock suddenly stopped at around 4.20. My mum and I changed the batteries and it started working, so no big deal. But the next day it stopped at about 4 again. So I bought a new clock with new batteries and hung it on the wall. It worked well for a couple of days, but it stopped working again. Frustrated, we bought one more clock, inserted new batteries worked for a couple of days again and it stopped again at 4.10. All three stopped clocks are still in this house and we gave up and since 2021 there have been no working clocks in the house. It almost feels like, I don't know, time doesn't exist when I enter this house to do my tasks. Whereas the clocks in the main house work as usual, there's no issues here at all. Although we found it strange, my family didn't think much about the incident and went ahead with their life. I mean, it's just a few clocks after all. I did do some googling to find the spiritual meaning behind stopping clocks though, especially around 4, after what I'm about to tell you, but nothing turned out. So anyway, I moved away from my house to pursue higher studies in a different city. I didn't experience any weird things there, and returned on August of 2022. I started using the outhouse again for studying and preparing for my exams. As I finished my task for the day, I went ahead to turn off the lights and suddenly I felt a, a slight tap on my upper arm. I completely lost my balance and hit myself against the wall. But again, I thought to myself, it must have just been me being clumsy or drowsy or something and went back to the main house to sleep. But the incident that happened two days ago drove me to share this with you guys. So I finished studying at around 8pm at night, like I usually do. I turned off the lights and just before I stepped outside the door to lock it, I felt someone or something whisper in my ear. Although I didn't see anything visually, it sounded sort of like gibberish and whatever it was, it whooshed past me. I even felt a waft across my face like air was being moved and 
At that, I rushed outside, locked the door, and I went back to my main house to sleep. I didn't discuss the incident with my family members because I would definitely get laughed at, said that it was all in my head. But I don't understand what I've been experiencing here. Is this what a haunting is? Should I be more aware of spiritual stuff like this, or am I just overthinking it all? What do you guys think? So this was very recent, six days ago to be exact. For some context too, I've struggled with seeing and hearing things that are not real since I was a kid and have had help over the years for it. Now, I'm a huge fan of hiking or just simply taking walks in the woods. The only time that I go alone is when I'm in the woods that I live near. This day though, I wasn't. I was with my friend Lars in a walk about three hours from my house. We were planning on traveling around and staying at motels in the meantime, and that day we decided to take a walk in a popular area for people who like to walk in the woods like me. The catch was that these woods were huge, which wasn't really a problem for us though because we liked it. In fact, we were thrilled. But there wasn't really much to it though, I mean... It was pretty, we escaped the crowd, but every now and then we would see someone walking by. There really wasn't much to it in the end though, I mean, it was pretty, we escaped the crowd, but every now and then we would see someone walking by. We walked for a while until we got to this spot, not too different from the rest, except for one thing, nobody else was around in this section all of a sudden. That's why me and Lars took this turn, the other turn had a few people there. And after a while of walking down this path, we spotted a man. A naked man. We gave each other a look and sort of turned around. The man was slightly off the path, bent over and looking at something. As me and Lars were walking back, talking about the strange man, I heard a voice behind me. I turned to see the man. He was talking to us about the bug that he picked up. I got a good look at him at this point. He was pretty tall, nothing crazy, but bald with a few brown hairs beginning to grow, but like I said, completely naked. I flashed the man a, a brief smile and I sped up, so as not to disturb him I guess. We got out of that place as fast as we could, and once we got to the car we just kind of laughed it off. I mean yes it was creepy, but more weirdly funny I guess you could say. The car ride was nothing, so skip to the motel. As we're checking in at the motel, we see the same man walk in. He was a little harder to recognize considering the fact that he now had clothes on and all that, just torn up clothes, but he waited behind us in line. Good thing we were almost done too, checking in, because as soon as we did, we went right to our room and locked it without a second thought. This was definitely creepy, I mean, was he following us or... Was it just a coincidence? We both decided that we weren't going to stay at this hotel for more than a night. Heck, I wouldn't have stayed even one night if Lars weren't there telling me that it was okay. That night though, Lars wanted to go outside for a cigarette at one point. I don't smoke, but no way was I going to stay in this room alone. I followed him outside, and we chatted for a bit. After a few minutes, I see the guy walk out of the door... Lars put out his cigarette and began to walk inside, but before we got in, the guy pulled out what was probably a knife or something else sharp. It was dark, so I couldn't really see, but it was something sharp, and started carving through his sleeve and right at his arm. I saw liquid, or what I thought was liquid, trickling to the ground and immediately knew that this was probably blood. I rushed into the lobby and Lars got the idea and followed and we alerted the staff but by the time that they got someone to come out, he was gone. To this day, I still have so many questions about that time. Did he follow us? Why the heck was he naked? Why was he doing that to himself in the first place? I guess I'll probably never really know the answers but honestly, I'm still spooked by all of this. I don't know what I'll do if I ever see him again, but man, I sure do hope that that never happens. So 
Nearly a year ago, on Christmas, I was at my dad's with some of my siblings. We celebrated Christmas and then after dinner, my dad headed off to be with his girlfriend at her apartment. Left in the house were my 16 year old uncle, my 16 year old brother, me who was 15, and the youngest who was a toddler. I woke up early in the next morning and it was the day after Christmas. I sat on the floor beside an outlet on my tablet. Everybody else was still sleeping and then I heard a banging on the back door. I thought it was my dad coming back but the banging got louder and went on for too long. For lack of a better term I think I disassociated, didn't know really what to do and couldn't move until I heard the back door break all of a sudden. I had been paranoid about home invasions due to our area in the city before but I had no idea what to do and just sort of stood there in shock. I put down my tablet and picked up a nearby flashlight. I think to throw at whoever broke in I guess but when the back door had given out I heard him go quickly through the downstairs, stomp up the stairs and then he was right outside of the door of the room that I was in. The man opened the door, turned left and then turned right where he saw me sitting on the floor, beside the outlet less than three feet away from him. He was taller than my dad and wore completely black and a ski mask as well. He held a big rustyish crowbar that had a blue handle. He was wide and looked on the older side. I took a small breath and screamed louder than I ever have and I held it for at least 20 seconds. Once I screamed, he screamed a bit too and then ran downstairs and out of the house. I went to the top of the staircase, after he was already down them obviously and out the hallway, and I yelled please leave as loud as I could. Looking back on this, asking a house invader to leave is pretty useless I know because he already was leaving and also because, I mean, he broke in, right? But I just wasn't thinking straight. My screaming though woke up my uncle and my older brother. I wasn't wearing pants so I put on pants quicker than I ever had while telling my older brother what had just happened as he was half awake and confused. I ran downstairs and my uncle had just come from his room in the basement. I quickly told him someone had broken in and left after I screamed. He already had a knife and told me to grab one too. I did and after making sure the robber had left the house and checking quickly on the toddler who was somehow still sleeping, we relaxed a bit. My uncle told me to guard the back door and stab anyone who comes through while he checked the area outside the neighborhood to see if the robber was gone or where he went. I held the knife and stood beside the broken back door knowing that if someone came back I couldn't really do anything as I never really fought before and I mean really I was just a kid holding a kitchen knife. So I just held the knife in hopes that they wouldn't come back and thankfully they didn't. My uncle came back and said that they must have had a driver since there was no way that he could get away that fast on foot. None of us had phones so my older brother called my dad over Instagram on a tablet to tell him what happened. We explained what happened and when dad was 10 minutes away via car he hung up. While we all sat and waited for my dad we talked and realized that this was likely all planned. The invader came when there was no car in the driveway and after entering he ran directly upstairs ignoring the new Christmas presents, an alcohol collection and even two gaming consoles smack dab in the middle of the living room that he had just run through. He went directly for my dad's room where me and my older brother were. My dad collects valuable shoes and has some expensive watches that he keeps in his closet and only someone friends with my dad who had been in the house before could have known that. In any case, when my dad came back, he asked me over and over about how the intruder looked and I just told him again and again while he and my uncle tried to think of which friend it could have been. I was the only one who saw the guy and had been less than three feet away from me. I was in direct physical danger from some stranger that I think that I'd never met. We didn't actually call the cops in the end as the police in our area and city are known for being more than unhelpful. But as Christmas was getting closer again, I was worried about being back there around the same time the person broke in. I've had a harder time sleeping and I've been more and more paranoid. I understand I was and am very lucky that I wasn't hurt and all we got was a broken back door in the end, but I still honestly hate the person who broke in. And I sure hope that whoever he is, that he gets caught soon.
So I live in northeast New Mexico and we're known to be a, a skinwalker hotspot. But I've always heard the stories and just joked about it really. But lately, I just don't know anymore. You see, I've been hearing sounds of like howling, heavy breathing and yipping out of my window. But when I look, there's never anything there. This has been going on for several months now and it was never any bother to me until recently, I guess. You see, a couple of days ago, I heard the sounds inside of my house along with footsteps. I immediately thought that it was an intruder, obviously, so I grabbed my SIG and started making a sweep of the house. I checked every room, but I didn't find anything. My house is single story and there's a, a small crawl space above the ceiling, but the only way to get into it is an attic door that I keep locked at all times. It could have been a small animal, I think, but it sounded like it was at least 150 pounds. Animals near my house have different behavior than in Texas, the only other state that I've lived in too, so obviously it's a different environment and all that, but I used to see animals standing still in front of my ring doorbell, just looking at it for like several minutes. It's been about two months since this last happened, but when it did happen, it was around twice a month, I would guess. In other instances, I've had squirrels climb on the sills and look through my windows. This happens near weekly, and just the other day I saw a hummingbird just sort of chilling in front of my window for about 30 seconds. I do have two dogs, Snoop and Riley. I started to keep them inside because they would start barking at random stuff in the dark, and it would spook the cows and wake us up. But I was hanging out with a friend and we were on a walk after sitting for several hours watching TV. It's fairly dark outside, probably about 9 or 10 p.m. I would guess. And he wanted to see my deer blind as we're both into hunting. We walked out there and talked for a bit before starting our walk back. But about a third of the trip back, we started hearing my dogs barking, owls hooting and the horses acting weird. It all started at the same time as well and ended at the same time. A little while later, there was what I can only describe as rustling in the grass about 40 feet in front of us. Both me and my buddy noticed it. It looked pretty large, about the size of a bear, and only the back of it was exposed, but it was dark, and the weirdest thing is that it was almost hairless. I started to back away slowly, and it stopped moving for a second before just scurrying off into the woods. It didn't have a tail, whatever it was, and obviously I didn't get a real good look at its head, but its body was, I don't know, kind of like a dog's, I would guess. In any case, we made it back to the house and talked for a bit before he started his drive home. But what do you guys think? Is this a skinwalker, or is this some other animal that I'm just not aware of? If so, what can I do to get rid of this thing? It's not good for the livestock for sure and it's scaring them a lot. And to be frank, it scares me a lot too. As a student in the late 90s, I was asked to take part in the last UK university's pistol shooting competition at Bisley Camp, home of Britain's largest competitive shooting complex. I wasn't keen on it as the Dunblane Massacre had put a grim slant on things and pistols were about to be permanently banned too. But with peer pressure, I agreed to go along. A minibus would take the team up. We'd have the competition. We'd have the competition, come home and go to the pub for a laugh. The night before the competition, I had a crystal clear dream of a white Ford Capri and a horrible accident. A row of four orange leafed trees, a broken axle, a Scottish woman with a small black dog asking if I was alright. I woke up that morning to be told that our minibus booking had fallen through and some guy called Luke would drive the four of us. I didn't know the guy, had never met him, never heard of him in fact, knew nothing about him or his car and had never been to Bisley. Luke was just a friend of a, a team member doing us a favour, Yet, he was wearing the red jacket, black jeans, and blue baseball cap of the person that I'd seen in my dream. When he turned up at our halls of residence in a white two-door Ford Capri, both I and the friend that I'd told about the dream essentially went pale and refused to get into the car. 
Guys, you're being ridiculous. I had it serviced last month. It's old, but it's fine. Uh, nah, man. The front axle of that car is... What? The axle's fine. Ticked off because we were late. He gets in and throws the car up and down the driveway, jamming on the brakes, and then shouts, See? Get in. We're late. The day goes fine. Competition ends. All in high spirits. Get in the car, and idiot Luke decides to speed up the main road out of the camp. Just as I yell stop, I'm getting out. There's an almighty pop, followed by screeching as the car veers left into a row of four orange-leafed trees and comes to a halt. Lots of panicked shouting and cursing, and we get out, and yep, sure as day, the axle has snapped. A crowd gathers due to the noise. As I'm standing there freaked out by all of this, a, a small woman that I somehow recognize walks up and, yep, asks me if I'm alright. She had a Scottish accent and is walking a small black terrier. When the double A turns up, he tells us that if this had happened at speed on the motorway, there's a good chance that we would all be dead. We eventually got home via some ridiculous series of buses and I sat eating in silence in the dining hall with my friend, both of us too messed up to say anything. I described the whole thing to him that morning and for several weeks afterwards, he became quite distant as though he mentally connected me with death itself or something. About a decade later, he caught up with me and the event came up in conversation. He found it much harder to talk about, but his comment has always struck me, I guess. He said that what I told him and what occurred that morning had forced him to see life in a, a very different way. Essentially, he'd had to face up to the possibility that there was more to this life than he was willing to consider and that it frightened him. He'd even had a, a few nightmares about it over the ensuing years, as he said, the sheer size of it all and what it meant has always scared me since then. I'm in my 40s now, and I find myself thinking about it every so often. I still, well, over 20 years later, I find it very hard to describe what I truly feel. I just know that this life and this death are, are far larger than we can ever comprehend, but to finish it all, a couple of years ago I had to sit in the back seat of my brother's two-door car on a quick journey. For the first time in my life, I had what I now know as a panic attack, and it was clearly linked to what I've just described. It was horrific, and I'll never sit in one of those ever again. Even thinking about it makes me slightly nauseous again. This stuff is buried very deep in our consciences. Last week, I was cleaning the house and forgot that I had to pick up some beers for the house. I checked the time and it was about 6pm. I figured that I had a little time but looked out the window and it was already dark. I figured that I would just head over to the nearest gas station and get back as quick as possible. It really shouldn't be an issue, I thought. So I start walking and I noticed someone walking in front of me. I thought nothing of it and continued walking, but... After a couple of blocks, I saw one of the stray cats that I feed regularly, so I stopped and pet him for a good 5-10 to 10 minutes. I get up and continue walking, but I then notice as I turn the corner that the man had stopped and seemed to be waiting for me to finish. I put my hood up and walked past, gripping the knife in my jacket pocket. I hear him behind me getting louder and louder as I started to speed walk. As I finally get to the gas station, I kind of take a breath and go to the ATM checking behind me every so often, completely forgetting about the beer at this point. As I finish up, I turn around and he is running down the aisle at me. I round the corner and he nearly knocks over a shelf trying to get to me. Another gentleman notices and helps me to keep an eye on him and offers to even walk me home. I get all my things and wait for him to leave before I purchase my things and start walking back. Me and the kind gentleman start heading back and making small talk while keeping eyes on the guy in front of us. The gentleman says his goodbyes as his house was closer and said, Do you have eyes on him? And I say yes and continue walking home. As I get a little closer to my house, I notice though that he dips off to the side of the road. I start walking a bit faster as I turn the corner to my house. And that was when I see him again behind me. I quickly run into my house, locking both locks on my door, and then 
I see him, basically breathing on my window. I was home completely alone and I was terrified for hours. I don't know if he left at some point because I never did check again, but I stayed awake that night with the phone by my side, ready to call 911. I'm a 25-year-old male, and I live in Utah, and, well, I guess I'm curious if any of you guys have seen anything like this before, because I'm pretty sure that I saw a Wendigo or a Skinwalker. I know it sounds strange or crazy, I get it, but I don't really believe in those things, and I'm regularly skeptical myself when it comes to the paranormal, but I definitely saw something. This happened to me when I was 17 and I was in high school and living with my parents. My house at the time was in a very small town. The backyard faced open empty fields and mountains for miles before you reached another civilization at all. My best friend lived next door as well and shared this field as our backyard in a way. I have to explain too that his house sat on what was sort of built on a different street that ended in the field with a small cul-de-sac. I know that sounds weird but... I hope you get it. I think that there were supposed to be more houses built down the street at some point to expand the town, but they clearly never got around to it. So his driveway was basically in his cul-de-sac, even though no other houses were built there. This matters later in the story as well. So, I used to stay the night at my friend's house a lot in high school because I didn't have the best relationship with my parents. Every once in a while, we would wake up to hear dragging and a weird sort of gargling sound from the back porch. His room was the basement room with the window well to the back porch. This would happen maybe a, a couple of times a month, but whenever we would gather the courage to check, nothing would ever be back there. This happened for years too, and in the end we just thought it was maybe the pipes or something. But one night, haunts my friend and I still to this day. You see, my friend was getting ready to move and we would stay up all night playing games and watching movies and stuff. We decided to go on a music drive to just vibe out and we hopped in his truck with high beams, swung out of the driveway, turning them on towards the field to use the roundabout. And when we did that, the light illuminated this, what I can only describe as, thing. It looked like a person, but it definitely wasn't. It was naked, on all fours, abnormally large, particularly its limbs that seemed to fold under itself in a really unnatural way. Its pale skin clung to it like it had been stretched onto it, but the part that still sends shivers down my spine is definitely its face. Its jaw hung open to its gaping black maw, like a snake unhinging its jaw to eat. Its black eyes glistened in the light as it looked at us, but as it turned to see us, it quickly scurried backwards, almost like it was on rewind, into the brush of the field. My friend and I were pale as ghosts. We both looked at each other and just said, did you see that? We were shaken and we were afraid. Let's just say too that we tried to have a good rest of the night, but we just could hardly believe what we saw. We ended up just sitting there in the basement with guns all night, ready and waiting to hear the gargling and the dragging again. But that night, we never did. In fact, it was a really anticlimactic night in the end, and it was weird. I now don't live in that town anymore, but there are times when I visit there though, and that empty field, it still feels like it's watching and waiting. And as silly as this sounds... Even though I, I can't see it, obviously, I still feel inside of me like it's out there somewhere. So I live in Tennessee, and I used to go fishing regularly with two other guys before I left the state to go to college this past August. One spot that we really like to fish, or just hang out at, is in this kind of hidden road that leads to a dead end. The dead end is a, a super tiny parking lot, for a lack of a better term. Only about maybe five spaces at the max. And we would go for a hiking trail, and it sort of forces you to turn around at one point. 
for an idea of how hidden this spot is, actually. My friends and I have even thrown parties out there, and we've never been seen. We usually fish late at night there, and also have a fire going, since we're out super late anyway, and it's in the middle of the woods. But one night, a bit past midnight, we had a few rods out along the water while we cooked some burgers on the fire. One friend decided that he wanted to try and toast his burger bun and everything, and the way Subway sort of toast your sandwich is what he said. The bun got a bit too burned and was solid, so I told him to put whatever meat was left with the bait and to just toss the bun. It's totally dark, mind you, and we're right next to the water. The only light that we had was the fire, our phone screens, and occasionally the inside of our cars when we had to walk like 10 to 15 feet away to grab other fishing gear. We did, however, have headlamps, but we didn't use them too much because the battery life would drain super quickly if we used them. These headlamps were really powerful though, but the only constant light, the fire, it was only illuminating so much of the water in front of us. Only like 5 feet at most, so everything after that was pitch black, but still water. So after putting the remaining meat in the bait bucket and mixing it, I told them that I had to take a leak. Before I walked away, my friend asked what to do with the burnt bun and we both told him to just throw it in the water and that the fish would take care of the rest. As I turned away, I was able to catch my friend throwing the bun into the darkness out of the corner of my eye. I walked back towards the entrance of the woods across the road behind us and did my business. While I did, I heard them just sort of chatting away, cutting up, and the other friend giving the first friend trouble for burning the bun, I think. As they're laughing about it, I'm still in the middle of my leak, and I suddenly hear them stop laughing, and it got completely silent. As I finished up, though, I heard frantic shuffling with the sound of fishing lines being reeled in. The friend who threw the bread was sort of packing up his gear. Those who fish understand packing up is the worst part, but the other friend too, who carries, was now holding his gun and turned his headlamp and scanning the water in front of where they were set up. I obviously came back and asked him what was going on, and he quietly told me to help pack up our stuff and to kick the fire over into the water. Due to him being goofy normally, I asked no questions and I did what he said. I remember picking up a piece of a hamburger bun next to the fire and tossing it into the water right in front of me as I was heading back to my car after kicking the fire over. And we were out of there faster than any other time that we left that fishing spot really. Keep in mind that we're way out in the sticks so it took us a bit to get to the closest gas station which we use as a last stop to get anything that we need before heading to this spot. The gas station is closed, but the parking lot to the side of it is always lit up by the street lights. So we pulled into there, and that was when I finally asked them what was going on, but they were both still wide-eyed and visibly shaken. It turns out, though, that while I was taking a leak, the piece of burnt bread my friend had thrown into the darkness actually flew back out of there, and landed right at their feet. I saw my friend throw that bread and briefly saw it fly into the darkness across from us too. And also, the piece that I threw back into the water on my way out, that was actually the same piece. I always work closing shifts, so sometimes I wouldn't fish with them, but they'd fish together at other spots in the area along that lake. And they told me about their other encounters with weird and unexplainable things before, but I always just brushed them off. But this time, this time it was different because, I mean, I saw my friend throw that bread into the water. And thinking back on it, that bread was definitely the one that I re-threw back into the water again. How is that possible?